Welcome, Christian. Welcome, Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Christian. And also, and also we, we have, have the, the uh, appreciation, appreciation certificate to recognize you and, and Chamber for the, for the wonderful contribution, contribution to this, to this event. event. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now, now the stage, the stage is, is yours, Christian. Christian. Thank, you. Thank you. Well, it's great well, to be great here and here welcome to the afternoon. We, uh, uh, if you haven't made it to the morning, morning and you're just joining us, we uh, still have a whole bunch of activities and information planned for you with a number of great speakers. It's all about helping you to be better tomorrow than you were today. Now, as I, uh, you heard a moment ago, my name is Christian Malesic. I'm gonna be your moderator for the rest of the day, each uh, session this afternoon. And I am the president and CEO of the Silicon Valley Central Chamber. We do have a few people in studio with us, but of course this is mostly an online event. If the speakers uh, finish with enough, enough time left in their presentation, we will be taking questions and answers at the end until that module ends. If the, if the speakers go speakers all the way to the end of their time, time then uh, obviously, obviously there will not be time for Q&A. &A. So make a make note a of your note questions, questions uh, put, put them in the, the chat, chat or, or certainly you can uh, raise your hand if you have one, one. and if we have time, time for each for section, each section we, we will get to them. To them. Uh, we would be uh, remiss if we went any farther without recommending all of our partners and thanking them for making this event possible today. Asian Inc. is one of our partners, obviously my organization, the Silicon Valley Central Chamber, Chamber of Commerce, Commerce. The, US the U.S. China, China Chamber, of Chamber of Commerce of Silicon, Silicon Valley. Valley, the Oakland, Oakland Chinatown, Chinatown Chamber, Chamber of Commerce, of Commerce. CBC, CBC, the Minority, Minority Business, Business Development, Development Agency, Agency. Ethnic, Ethnic Media, Media Service, Service. UN, UN Media, Media. CBC, CBC Life, Life Financial, Financial Service, Service and Eric, Eric Jong, Jong and Associates. So again, so again thank you thank to you all of them, and if they can help you make your business better, better please turn to them uh, and let them and be let a them part of your business successful business plan. plan. We've, been We've been talking about doing business, business with various, with various levels, levels of the government and how you can be a better business, business and that's and what that's we're gonna we're continue gonna doing for this next session, particularly getting into capital certification, procurement, those type of issues. We are very pleased and thankful to have with us another wonderful speaker from Northern California Small Business Financial Development Corporation, a part of the state of California. We have with us Blaine Laney. Blaine, take it away. Okay, thank you. I guess our goal here today is to help you get access to capital. I know part of the focus of this meeting today is to be able to secure government contracts. Uh, my background has been in lending and finance for the last 44 years. Um, started off with Zions Bank in Utah, but been here in California um, since uh, for about the last uh, 40 years. And uh, for the last eight years I've worked for NorCal FTC, which is a federal development corporation. And we are licensed to issue state guarantee loans for businesses in the state of California with 750 employees or less for business operations in California. And so what, and you have up online my resume that kind of gives you my background. And I guess over time, um, my lending background has allowed me to be able to work with small and medium sized businesses like yourselves and be able to help understand your vision and to be able to then look at what's available in the marketplace to be able to help you make your vision a reality. Uh, access to capital is important. It's about purpose and use of proceeds. It's about finding the right partners. And if we can go to um, the next slide, uh, why use the state uh, guarantee program? Okay. 
Right. And I guess while we're doing that, part of the uh, state of California's small business lending program, and you may not be aware of it, has existed since 1968. It was under um, Governor Brown, actually the father of the Governor Brown that um, was in office prior to Governor Newsom. And this has provided uh, a state of California guarantee loan program uh, that is separate and distinct from the federal SBA program, actually complements it, but is separate and distinct. And under this program, you can, from certified lenders, of which we have about 140 statewide, um, we actually get requests for approval subject to a guarantee of up to 80% of the loan amount uh, for loan guarantees. Um, so if you had a million dollar request, then a guarantee, which is an incentive for the lender to be able to do it, would be up to 80% of that amount or 800,000. Uh, the fees are two and a half percent on the guarantee amount plus $250. The length of the guarantee is for seven years. And we have NorCal FDC, we're one of seven licensed federal development corporations in the state of California to be able to issue guarantees under the state of California small business loan program. And I guess this program has been very successful. Um, and I think so far in this fiscal year at NorCal alone, we have issued over, we have placed guarantees on over 200, 200 loans and we have provided probably guarantees in the amount of $60 million plus so far this year. Um, and very soon, by the end of June or early July, with more federal money coming in, the, the guarantee limit will go up to $5 million. The maximum loan amount is $20 million. And we can lend to nonprofits as well as for-profit corporations. Um, the debt service coverage can be based upon historical or projected. So you can be a new business and be able to get funding as well. Uh, and it has a, a variety of, of uses. And I guess it's about purpose and use of proceeds. So government contracts for your business. And I guess to be able to get a loan, you need to be an actual business. It can be a DBA, a sole proprietorship. It can be a partnership. It can be a corporation but it must be a business and not an individual. Um, so this would be a program that would be ideal for you. And this gives a lot of, and it can be for lines of credit, can be for working capital, um, term loans. It can be if you get in the per, uh, situation to purchase your own building to occupy your business, it, that is also an eligible purpose. Um, and if we can move on to the uh, next slide, please. And the state of California small business loan program of which NorCal FDC is um, the most active uh, participant of the seven federal development corporations. Uh, we probably so far this year accounted for probably 40 to 50% of the guarantees that have been made in the marketplace so far. And we do We've done loans probably as small as $25,000 that we place guarantees on up to loans is probably as large as $10 million. So there, there is, no matter where your business is at, this program has a way to be able to help you find access to capital. 
And I guess something else that is also available to you through a partnership, we have a partnership with the Northern California Small Business Development Financial Network through the SBDC Financial Centers, where you sign a form and then you, through the process of getting your financing and then going forward, you can be able to have access to other financial professionals to help you with projections, business plans, to be able to help evaluate things as you go along and at no cost to you. So there's some great advantages here. And also in the state of California small business loan program, you do not have to pay any upfront fees, at least as the guarantee portion. The guarantee portion is guarantee fees are paid at closing and they can be financed. The lender themselves may have some application fees, but for the state business loan guarantee, there are no fees that are paid until closing. And so that's a real advantage and the fees can also be financed. Um, and we are actually governed, NorCal is governed by the California Infrastructure Bank, also called the iBank. Uh, that is located in Sacramento, and we work under them, and we have a very good relationship with them, and this is a program in conjunction with your federal SBA program, gives you additional access to capital. And some of the advantages are we don't have any liquidity restrictions. Um, you could have, you know, a million and a half dollars in the bank and that would be fine. There has to be a reason you need the program. Um, but that's usually easy to establish. Um, and I guess at this particular time, um, if people have, and this kind of shows you as far as NorCal, and if we go through these slides, um, it talks about financial development corporations, guarantees up to 80% of the loan. And let's go to the next slide, please. And then it gives you as far as NorCal and the other uh, seven FDCs or and we can do loans, although we're, we are headquartered in Oakland, we can do guarantees on loans anywhere in the state from San Diego to the Oregon border. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and it's been around since 1968 with um, 27 million today self-sustaining fund. Anytime a loan is made, it is earmarked against some trust funds and they cannot be used for anything else. And the state of California program is only one of two in the nation that has a state small business guarantee loan program. And it has performed very well, even in the height of the recession, the delinquency did not exceed 4%. Currently the fund is, I think the delinquency or default rate is about two. And at NorCal, ours is less than 1%. Um, so it's something that does not depend upon annual allocations from the state legislature. And it's been active and vibrant um, now for over 60 years. Uh, next slide, please. And this, uh, kind of shows you the pattern of how things work. A small business owner needs a loan, contacts an FDC, FDC contacts a partner, bank best suited for the borrower, bank makes the loan and the FDC guarantees. My bank sets aside 20% of the guarantee in a reserve for future claims. Um, and that's how the program works. The guarantee can be up for seven years, but the lender can make the loan for a longer period of time or a longer amortization. Uh, next slide, please. And this gives you um, 
a list of some of the major participants in the a state of California small business loan program. You may notice some of the banks that you deal with as you look at this list, um, but this list is changing and each bank recertifies um, every year as of July 1st. So that will be going here shortly. Uh, next slide, please. And this shows the purposes, business acquisition, new construction, renovation, tenant improvements, inventory and receivables, business expansion, purchase equipment, working capital, lines of credit, startup costs, gap financing prior to permanent financing, export financing. So the uses are you know, quite expansive. Next slide, please. Um, and the no's, it can't be on an investment property. So if it isn't an owner occupied property with 51% or more, it's not eligible. Um, if there's a conflict of interest, it can't be used to pay delinquent taxes. Uh, if it's a legal activity, for example, you cannot have a guarantee involved with anything that has gambling activity in the business. And um, you cannot refinance it did originally not use for an original purpose. Um, but the reasons for yes are more than the reasons for no. And in my experience in NorCal, as a lender, I originated probably over 50 uh, state guaranteed loans uh, as I was a chief credit officer in San Francisco for 16 years and having worked now for NorCal for uh, seven and a half years as a loan consultant, probably Approval at loan committee is probably about 99% once it comes from a lender. I think it's just finding the right partner. And we do, if you're starting out at a lower level, we have micro lenders that do loans up to $200,000. Uh, next slide, please. Um, maximum loan is up to $20 million. I think the largest one we've done is about a $12 million loan. Maximum guarantees two and a half million, soon to go to five million. Uh, the guarantee fee is two and a half percent on the guarantee amount plus two hundred and fifty dollars. And as we mentioned before, this can be financed. The guarantee is up to seven years. Loan term can be longer. And everything is. We do not prescribe an interest rate for a lender. It can be unsecured. It can be. Uh, partially secured, that's up to the, and you can still be a small business if you have the full-time equivalent of 750 employees or less. A next slide, please. Next slide, please. Um, And so this just shows you, and I guess we make it easier too because we don't have any special forms. We take the um, lender's credit approval write-up and that's what we use. We have a summary template. Um, and so it's actually, and we do not have any charges uh, until closing. So it makes it, um, makes it, much easier and it's flexible. For example, if you've had a bankruptcy in the past, as long as there's a reasonable explanation, it's been at least two years since it's been discharged, that is not an impediment to, um, to getting a loan. You can get financing for government contracts, but we also, if you wanted to buy a partial interest in a business, that's something that we also guarantee is eligible for, whereas on the federal SBA side, you need to be able to buy the entire business. Um, so the state guarantee program, it's, it is a risk mitigant. It's something that balances things out. Business isn't always perfect and it helps businesses get more financing sooner. 
Um, and as long as you have legal status in the country, you do not have to be a citizen to be able to get a um, qualify for a state small business loan guarantee. Uh, next slide, please. And they also have a disaster loan program. Um, they had a special one for COVID where if you were impacted by COVID um, that you could get loans up to a million two hundred and fifty thousand. And based upon the interest rate, the lender could get above an 80% guarantee up to 95%. And we've been active in disaster loan relief program, not just during COVID, but also for the fire since the Tubbs fire in 2017. And continuing with the glass fire that was the last major fire here and also with floods. And so the program and these programs were not created and initially these programs have been available. So there's a lot of resources that are available that give you more access to capital. There are probably about 140 certified lenders statewide and growing. And at NorCal, we deal directly with probably 45 or so lenders, and that is also growth. And so, um, and at this particular time, would open it up for any questions that people might have. Thank you, Blaine. Thank Very you, Blaine. appreciative. Uh, we do have some time for questions, and I noticed there are a few written into the questions and answer section of the chat. So if you would like to ask a question, uh, please go ahead and type that into the Q&A section, and we will now have staff read the first question, please. So we have a question from Hong Liu. Where to register city, states, and uh, uh, federal projects? Would you repeat that again, please? Where to register city, states, and the federal projects? Where do we register, I think is the question, at both the city level, the state level, and the federal level? Oh, hmm. Well, we provide guarantees, so I guess, um, I guess if you had interest as far as the state small business guarantee program, I, I guess my contact information is available to reach out to me and we could discuss your situation and look from our lenders and, and connect you with a lender in your area to help you with your financing need. Most of the lenders that deal with the state small business guarantee program Many of them, but not all of them, are also involved in the federal SBA program. And so, and we, as long as, to give you an example, we have done deals, uh, for example, on a purchase of a gas station recently where the SBA did a loan on the real estate. And then we did, and then there was a second done for the purchase of the goodwill. So it was a combination of both a federal SBA and a state small business guarantee to be able to help the business move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any Are there questions any from questions our live from audience, audience, audience here in the studio? Here in the studio. Okay, seeing none, seeing let none, me go let back, me go to, back the to the online audience. audience. Staff, do we, Staff, we have another question? Another question? Another question. Another question. Another question. No, that's the only, that's only one question. question. Okay, we only had one. Blaine, thank you so much for uh, for your presentation. Any final parting comments that you have for us? Well, the thing I would say is um, there are a lot of resources available to help you get access to capital. And some of the resources that may be important is to reach out and get help and how to communicate your vision.
to be able to get help for a business plan, to get help with projections. Because the thing that I've seen over many years, a lot of you know your business very well, but to be able to have other people appreciate to be able to see and understand your vision and how you're going to accomplish that becomes important. And it's all right to ask for help. We're not all experts of any, at anything. And I think the most successful businesses I've seen have different people, whether it be marketing, whether it be financial, whether it be the business plan or production side that are experts in each one of those. And I think to be able to reach out because Getting access to capital is very often based upon the quality of your presentation so other people can clearly see your vision, see what you bring to the table, the strengths and the weaknesses, and it can be presented that puts you in the best light and to be able to have somebody help you understand what are maybe some of the best vehicles to help you accomplish that. And, and there are resources available, and we work with many businesses and then connect them with partners um, early on in their process, and we found that that helps the chance of success increase greatly, and we appreciate all of the efforts of all of you businesses and the great contribution to the state of California that you offer. And there is help available. There are people that are, are ready to help you get better access to capital and to be able to accomplish, grow and expand your businesses. Um, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Blaine. Thank Have you, we Blaine. covered all we the covered material all we wanted to cover today to cover from today. Your, office? your office? I believe so, yes. Okay, thanks again for, uh, for your time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, we're going to take just a short break, very quick. Uh, if you need to go to the bathroom or get something to drink, this would be the time to do it. You certainly can stay online with us. We'll be back momentarily. Thanks. See you soon. Uh, Eric, are you here? Are you here? Uh, yes, I'm here. Yes. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Your turn right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks okay, for uh, thanks standing by and waiting for us. As you might have figured out, uh, we were a little bit ahead of schedule from that last speaker, so we had to make sure that our next speaker is good to go. And in fact, he is, so we are just gonna keep going. We have a lot happening yet uh, the rest of the day, and we're gonna take you not quite to five o'clock, but almost five o'clock. Uh, you certainly can tune in and tune out, but we'd love for you to stay with us here all day. We're gonna be talking about getting government contracts. We're gonna be talking about how enterprises can, can risk, look at their look risk, at their risk financing. financing. We have attorney, attorney to do that to with do us. That with uh, us. Uh, we're, certainly we're certainly getting into getting support, into support and, and procurement training, training questions, questions and answers. And answers. We're going to talk about resource, about resource and development, and development resources, resources from the U.S. government, government for, startups. for startups. And uh, we, we are we also going to talk about which type of company is the most suitable and most tax efficient for what you're trying to accomplish. So as we get ready to move into our next section of the afternoon, again, Again, my name is Again, Christian Malesic. I am with the am Silicon, Silicon Valley, Valley Central, Central, Central Chamber of Commerce. Of Commerce. We are the we Chamber are the of Chamber Commerce in the Silicon, Silicon Valley, Valley and really the greater, the greater Bay Area, area and beyond, and beyond uh, San Francisco, San Francisco Oakland, Oakland, San Jose area. area. And we are and proud to be a partner of this event this along event, with along Asian with Inc., Inc., the U.S. China US Chamber China of Commerce in Silicon Valley, Oakland, China, Chinatown, rather, Chamber of Commerce, CBC, 
Minority, Minority Business, Business Development, Development Agency, Agency Ethnic, Ethnic Media, Media Service, 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 CBC Life Financial Services, and Eric Jong and Associates. This wouldn't be possible, and bringing all these wonderful speakers in this great content without those partners that have stepped up to be a part of today to bring this all together, help us find the speakers, fund everything, get the notice out to you, do all the marketing. So thank you so much to those partners. And we have another really important uh, topic and area for consideration that's coming up here uh, with our next speaker, speaker who is standing, who is standing by. by. So without so further without ado, further to, talk to, to talk to you a little, little bit about for small, small and medium-sized medium enterprises, enterprises, which, which company, company, which type, type of company, company is, the is the most suitable, suitable for your situation, your situation and is the and most tax-efficient? Tax uh, we have an expert, have an to, expert talk to talk to you about this, the this. president of the Sino American Certified Public Accountant Association. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Eric John. Hello, Eric. Take it away. Take it away. Yeah, thank you, Christian, for your introduction. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, okay good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Eric John. Uh, today is so honored, so I can uh, share you guys some topic regarding the choice of uh, entity. Uh, too small to mid-size business, SMB. Uh, I know today's, uh, our theme is uh, help the minorities get a government contract. Uh, we try to uh, uh, celebrate and recognize uh, this Asian American uh, Pacific uh, Islander Heri Heritage Month, API. So I'm so glad that, you know, I'll be part of it, can contribute uh, some of my uh, expertise or uh, my knowledge, you know, in uh, some uh, area so we can help the minorities to get some government contract. Um, so this might be my background. Uh, before the, uh, you know, the, all the uh, presentation, so we always have the disclaimer. So everything we uh, talk about today is for the general education purpose for the general public. So you cannot use my uh, information in this, uh, uh, PPT to uh, for your tax return preparation or tax planning or the negotiation, uh, you know, uh, through the IS uh, uh, when you have get a tax audit. We always recommend you guys uh, to find your tax advisor or CPAs when you have a particular uh, tax issues. All right. Okay. Uh, I have a full uh, part of the section uh, for this uh, presentation. Uh, first, because I want to touch base with uh, today's topic. Uh, so how to uh, grab the uh, government contract. So my experience for the government contract, uh, so back to over uh, 18, 19 years ago, uh, when I'm still uh, in Bay Area as a staff uh, uh, auditor in a local SAP firm. So I tried to uh, help my uh, uh, local firm to get some uh, government uh, audit project. So I will be a uh, try to be a, uh, uh, talk about a little bit of my own uh, appearance for how to uh, uh, obtain a government contract a little bit. So the next three part section is all related to a uh, choice of entity. So when I uh, studied in the Golden Gate University as a master, uh, uh, master tax Asian program. Uh, so the choice of entity is, a, is, a, is a, like a big, bunk of the book. So we studied the whole uh, semester. And uh, after that, uh, many classmates still cannot really uh, understand you know, what's the best choice uh, when you start from an uh, entity. Uh, so, but uh, today I will be uh, also give you guys a little bit of uh, direction or maybe fitting. Uh, so which way, which type is maybe better fit uh, your situation. So let's start for the uh, first uh, part. Um, so the small business, small business definition in SBA, uh, Carlos this morning, uh, I think I described very uh, in, uh, in detail orientated, but I just want to uh, repeat a bit more. Uh, see the small business, the definition is not you really what you think, you know, five people, 10 people, 20 people consider small business, that's for sure. So what about uh, over hundred people? 
what about over a thousand employees? So your your revenue below a million dollars, you said, oh, this is small business. So what about your revenue three million or five million? So even more than seven million. So um, when you really look into the definition, you see uh, the small business definition is not what you really think about is small. So you need to uh, take a look uh, SB, the table of small business size standards. So you always can go to the SB website to take a look. Is your business considered a small business? So I use this, for example, one third of all retail trade, sub industries. The size standard, if they do the testing, your average revenue, okay, receipt, it's uh, below 7.5 million. Is considered a small business. Other retail, this sub industries, if they are counted by number of employees, that can be a hundred to five hundred. So that's mean usually for retail side of the industry. So the number of employee cannot exceed five hundred. Consider small business for SBA purpose. But if uh, we come to the information industry, like uh, a lot of uh, you know Silicon Valley, uh, Northern Cal. Uh, then you will see some uh, startup, uh, but I think uh, Carlos already mentioned about usually if you want to get SB loans, you know, you must be in business in two years. It's a kind of uh, uh, exceptional, uh, not many occasions if a startup uh, business can get uh, like an SBA, uh, some kind of a loan. If you haven't been, uh, uh, you know, in a business for more than two years, uh, but uh, like in information industry, you can see the employee number can be range from a 500 to a 1500. Yeah, depend on you know the sub inform, uh, information industry uh, code or category. Okay, the so maximum annual average receipt for information industry can range be 7.5 million, can up to 38.5 million. So it's close to 40 million already. This consider it's a it's a large corporation already. Uh, but you know what? it can still be defined as small business, okay? Um, so the small business, beside the number of employee and your average, your gross revenue, you also need to consider your legal uh, structure. So who own the business? Is foreigner own the business? Then maybe you cannot get the SB government, you know, contract or loan. Uh, then where you operate, you mainly operate, you mainly, in operating in the US basis, or you your main operation in the overseas. So such factors can be uh, an issue, you know, when you try to get a loan. Uh, especially uh, you guys all know for the past two years, the, the PPP, uh, payroll protection uh, program, uh, then that's the big support for uh, small or uh, middle-sized business uh, when they survive those COVID-19 situations. And a lot, a lot of EIDL loan, uh, see the restaurant business, they consider like a RF, Restaurant Revitalization Fund. So when we talk about the RF, you know, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, so you guys maybe, maybe remember that's about 28.5 billion funding at the very beginning. So the fund, uh, that's requirement is uh, for the 21 days, they only open to small business and also minority owned with a uh, what with a socially disadvantage and uh, economically disadvantaged group so that's why it's very important first you need to define your business is a small business secondly it's a minority owned thirdly so it might be socially disadvantaged and economically disadvantaged group so you need to definitely talk to your um, financial advisor, tax advisor, CTAs. Uh, you know, when you're looking into the, grab the government contract. So back to 18, 19 years old. So when I submit, you know, one of the CTAs audit proposal. So we consider our firm is a minority owned and also women owned. So Carlos this morning also touched base I mentioned about if women own, you must be owned. The, the main person might be owned uh, 50%. Uh, that's considered women owned. Uh, yeah, but also minority owned. So uh, in this case, 
uh, you must be a small business, as I mentioned about, it's a minority owned business, and also you get some uh, social and economic disadvantage. So then you might be have a more compatible when you grab the government uh, contract. Okay, so this section I just want to be an echo to this same. So give you a little bit of, uh, you know, information uh, regarding uh, what's the requirement uh, when you try to grab a government contract. But uh, in contrast, so for the RS, when we define small versus large corporation, so I think the new update uh, for the RS uh, before it's 10 million and more is considered a large corporation. Right now, it's uh, all the past three years, the gross revenue less than 26 million, they consider it a small uh, business. That's for the RS purpose. So when you get an audit, uh, you probably do not notice. So the audit department came from a small and self-employed department or from the large or international uh, group from the RS to get a, you know, a, a, a corporation a federal audit. Uh, so just uh, let you guys know. So that's the different definition for small and large uh, based on federal level, state level, uh, even different uh, department, like the department of uh, uh, transportation, DOT, and maybe they have the, also they have their definition for small business and the RS have their own. And uh, also the same thing for the franchise test board in state in California. Okay, so let's come to my uh, traditional section uh, regarding the, you know, the corporation structure. Uh, first, when you set up a corporation, so the first question you want to ask yourself, who owns the business? Yourself or you have partners? Your partner is a corporation or trust or another foreign person. So that's can make a, the entity choices a little bit different. So secondly, you want to talk to yourself, where to operate the business. So now today we only cover in California. So we do not talk about uh, much about the multi-state uh, in corporation tax issue. So we leave it as uh, which county you want to sell. In San Francisco County, Santa Clara County, LA County, San Mateo County, uh, San Bernardino County or Orange County. So different county and different city you incorporate. You need to consider the business license fee. So if you, like uh, I located in the Southern California, so my office in uh, I have a uh, three office in uh, Southern California, like the Pasadena, Orange County, City of Industry. I have an office in Mayor Peters in the East, East Bay in the San Francisco area, and also have an office in uh, like uh, Houston and the Seattle area. But when we talk about the in, in within California, so if my office in the City of Industry, so I won't need to pay any business license fee. If I move my office just the one, one, one street, uh, on the west, west side of the street. That might be in the West Covina cities. You, you, you know, you can, maybe your business license fee can be a thousand dollars, a couple of thousand dollars. Uh, not that much money, but uh, you know, when you do some uh, uh, carefully kind of uh, uh, investigation, uh, like a startup, uh, those kind of, uh, you want to think about, hey, which city I need to sub my, uh, uh, office. And do I need to set my office, you know, in my car garage? Yeah, you can. You know, you do not need to, must be have an office. But maybe your city will become to you, send you a letter, say, hey, you know, you use your own home as your business. Did you file a business, you know, uh, like a permit? So, you know, that's make, make sure you can allow it uh, to uh, uh, in, incorporate and use your home address as your business address. So same thing, the county tax. Uh, you always think about, you know, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a regulation for the cities and for the counties uh, because we didn't talk about state right now because we're only focused on California. So where to operate a business is also very important. That also can be how the impact for where, you know, or what type of the business suppose you should uh, incorporate. Okay, third, so we, that's why, you know, we come to 
today's our uh, main topic, which entity type fits a business. So that's different uh, type of uh, business. What, you know, how many? So what they are. So those type of entity, we can consider if you can be the super partnership as a self-employed schedule C business. If you like to be a realtor, uh, insurance uh, agent, professional, so you can be a handy person. Uh, you can be just a, a turn to your hobby, to a small business online, like a retail. So you can start from a small as a super partnership. That's self-employee. So two super partnership, two individuals. Uh, we, we super partnership, we call in Chinese called 个体户. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, you know, today, uh, I think before we prepare the bilingual translation, uh, both in English and uh, also my uh, uh, senior manager, uh, Mark Zhong, uh, CPA, will be translated in Chinese, I'm not sure. So uh, if that's uh, the Chinese translation channel, is still on. So if not, so you can always, you know, come to our office. So we can both can uh, have uh, our uh, uh, partners and CPAs, uh, you know, in-house can speak uh, either Mandarin, Cantonese, uh, Karen, uh, definitely English, yeah. Uh, so, but uh, today I'm, uh, I think I just, uh, uh, the, the organizer just uh, mentioned about this so we can focus just using English. Uh, so if you do not uh, really understand this part in, uh, in, in, in English, just, just uh, you know, let us know. I will be uh, sending a uh, Chinese version to you to us. Okay, so two super partners. Uh, two super, uh, so self-employed person, they form, they can form a, either general partner or limited partner. So the partner must be have two member. So then third, okay. So the first super partnership and the partnership. Okay, I will be tell you the difference. Uh, uh, this is a consider is a pretty much all limited liability. It's all you export your personal asset to the business you know you involved. Then we come, we come to the limited liability, that's three type. It's one in the LLC, a lot of people, they might be know, uh, this is used, you know, it's popular for a lot of small corporation, or uh, especially attorney always try to use this uh, limited liability company as the uh, corporation's uh, entity type. We use have a, a corporation at the very beginning. Uh, then we come to C corporation and S corporation. Uh, let's do one by one. Uh, comparison. So I'll give you guys some more details comparison here. Okay. So let's see. For the number of owners, I mentioned about the sole partnership, only one. Yeah, eligible owner, only one. General partner, so minimally two is all general partners. So eligible owners, there can be no limitation. Uh, the general partners can be, uh, the partner can be corporation, C, S, all type of trust. So the partner not can be individual only, they can be a, a corporation too. Like a limited partner, limited partner, they have a GP and LP, they have a general partner. Okay, then they have a limited partner. LLC. LLC is depending on the tax status. Actually, LLC is a hybrid. It's a, they can be, you know, the LLC can be super partnership. LLC can be a partnership. LLC can be a C corporation. LLC also can be S corporation. So the LLC have the different faces if you uh, treat them differently. So when you start the corporation, you think that's so simple, identify the, you know, uh, just the article of incorporation, and maybe I, start, I file online, maybe, you know, cost you $150, 200 bucks, so I can do it by myself, just LLC. But if you do not know the difference, okay, if you don't know the difference later on, that can be trigger your uh, big tax burdens or tax liabilities. When you make money, uh, when you would file the return, if you not sure what type of uh, uh, you know form you need to file under the LLC. Actually, LLC is uh, the most I think is complicated. Uh, the the entity type, uh, you know, you guys need to be very careful when you try to form a company under LLC. 
Uh, so and the LC is a limited liability that can be one person. Okay, one person is a is a one member. Okay, incorporate the LC by default is super partnership. That means there's no corporation form need to file. Only file needs to file Schedule C for the federal level and the 568 single member LLC form attached with your state California tax return. Okay, if two members LLC, so you can think about you want to file at the partnership 1065 for the you know federal level, or you can file the form 8832, you can do some uh, entity reclassification, reclassify the LLC to C corporation or S corporation, file as 1120 or 1120S. So this is a point of tricky. So um, make sure uh, when you guys form a corporation, uh, you need to uh, definitely understand this part, or at least you get your tax professional, tax advisor to help you. Uh, then let's talk C corporation. C corporation, no matter it's one person, two person, maybe 100 person, a thousand shareholders, okay? Doesn't matter. So you can form a C corporation, S corporation. So I, I know for tax effective purpose for lots of small business, S corporation might be one of the most efficient, you know, type of entity. You know, a lot of, uh, uh, business owners choose, uh, but they have some limitation. So the shareholder must limit to less than hundred shareholders. And uh, that's might be no foreigners in this S corporation. Uh, you can see uh, partners, corporations, yet cannot be the S corporation shareholders. So there's uh, some limitation for the S corporation election. Yeah. So, Let's go to the next page. Uh, for, for the e easy of formation, ownership liability and transfer and the deposition of the business interest, uh, we can see super partnership is very easy to set up. So you only need to uh, file a fictitious statement to the county you are doing business. So then publish uh, your name in the local newspaper for a month, you know, uh, once. Uh, in, a, in a week for four weeks. So nobody just, uh, uh, you know, have the dispute with you. So you can just go ahead with the name. We call the DBA, it's a doing business as, it's a fictitious name. So then you can go ahead, uh, run your business. But uh, as I mentioned about it's unlimited liability, you report this uh, self-employed business in your Schedule C. Um, so for the general partner, it's a similar like a super partnership, just, just a two person, they, uh, they partner together. So leave the partner, we can see general partner is similar like a super partnership. LP, thus risk only limited to how much capital they contribute to this partnership, okay? So LLC and the C corporation, S corporation, they all is a limited liability company. So that's mean the risk or limited to the investment. Okay, uh, they must be filed the article in cooperation with the state of in California, uh, both JP and LP, it's the same thing. Yeah, um, talk about the transfer deposition of the uh, de uh, disposition of the business and interest that, that can involve a lot of complex, complex, complex issues. So I just uh, uh, do not want to talk that too, too many, too much. Okay, so now we talk about the tax each entity they need to uh, uh, relate it to each entity, like a super partnership. So we know when you get a 1099, so you, you report your in schedule C. So part of you need to report income tax. Okay. Then another part, you need to import the self-employee tax, the, the whatever we talk call about the 15.3% social security, Medicare, FACA tax. And the general partnership, GP, same thing, income tax plus self-employed tax. Leaving the partner, for GP, they need to, there's net income subject to income tax and the self-employed tax. But LP, it's passive income, so only subject to income tax. 
it's very important you guys understand the difference. Yeah, then that can be a, make you, a, a, you know, a try to uh, range what type of uh, uh, business you want to form. You know, maybe you have a different thought. So cooperation. Cooperation is subject to like a cooperation levels uh, tax rate. It's an income tax. No self no self employed tax involved. Same thing. Uh, but uh, so as I mentioned later on, there'll be uh, two level of income tax involved for the C corporation. So one is a uh, uh, corporation level, one is a uh, uh, shareholder level, like an individual level. Uh, in, uh, then S corporation. S corporation is only you know, limited to the income tax, not self-employed tax. That's why uh, we, uh, you know, I just uh, talk about probably S corporation is uh, one of the most efficient tax uh, entity instruction uh, in structure for most of the small business uh, for, you know, for a reason. Yeah. Okay, so for the tax reporting, so all the entity is, besides LLC and the C corporation, they just pass through entity, PTE. So all the income eventually will be goes to, at the current year, will be the net income, uh, all everything will be, uh, the, the, you know, for the super partnership, you report uh, everything in your personal tax return. Like a GP, LP, S corporation, you need to file the corporation return, but the net income loss will be passed through to your personal. Limited liability is depend on what type of the form you use. If you use a C corporation, then you have a 1120 corporation level tax return. You need to pay the corporation levels income tax. When you get dividend out, so it goes to your personal, then you get a dividend tax. So, uh, so you know, make it simple. The C corporation is a two double taxation. The rest of the entity can only be one layer of the tax. Okay, I will be definitely uh, talk about a little bit uh, in detail. Okay, um, now we got a little bit of a review about the tax rate. So before we can touch a little bit of uh, little bit examples or, or more details. Yeah, so in the California state level, the C corporation is a, the income tax rate is 8.84%. S corporation only 1.5%. That's based on the net income. That means gross revenue minus cost goes so, minus all the expenses. So you have a net profit. So in California, you need to pay 8.84% for the C corporation. S corporation, I mentioned, there's no corporation level tax. So federal level, there's no tax. So the state, so you need to pay 1.5% based on your, your net income. Okay, let's come to the LLC. LLC always is, have a unique character of features. Yeah, it, it's really, um, it's a uh, attorney is a love LLC because the protection, asset protection, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the capture is uh, better than C corporation and uh, S corporation, uh, even they all is limited ability, but it's hard to uh, break into the shell uh, to the shareholder in personally. And so I will leave those uh, legal issues to the attorney. So I only want to talk about the tax part. So LLC, they pay 800 annual tax but they also pay a LLC fee. But the LLC fee is not based on the net income, it's based on the corporation's gross income. So GP does no minimum income tax, uh, no minimum franchise tax. LP, they have $800 uh, minimum franchise tax. But as uh, a lot of people know, that California now is uh, kind of uh, generous, you know, try to, uh, uh, encourage and help small business. So they have a two years uh, waiver for the minimum franchise tax, $800. Um, so this is a pretty good, it's a really help uh, for those uh, uh, starters, 
if they haven't made any profit yet, they won't need to pay the minimum franchise tax, uh, especially in the first year. Okay. Mm. All right. So when I talk about the LLC fee, okay, uh, here I need to just uh, uh, clarify a little bit. So they have a two year uh, period. So uh, each year, so when you have a new start corporations, you know, you won't need to pay $800 only for the first year. Okay. Yeah. All right. For the LLC fee. So we'll see if the business, they have a gross revenue less than $500,000 a year, but uh, over 250000 besides the $800, they need to pay extra $900, no matter the business is make a, a profit or have a, a loss. So that doesn't matter. So for example, if you are in a wholesale trading business, if you set up a California LLC, your first year sales, that's a lot, $6 million. But because, you know, uh, the, the, free, the duty fee and the inflation, you cannot uh, impact it, you know, your cost even over than your sales price. So you have a huge loss for the year. So you may maybe have a $2 million loss, okay? But because you form an LLC, uh, and uh, just uh, do like a partnership return. So that's make you uh, need to pay $11,790 besides the $800 minimum franchise tax. Yeah, you said, wow, you know, I have a $2 million loss this year. Why I need to pay $11,790 uh, LLC fee? That's because the LLC is based on your gross revenue. They do not based on how much money you made. So then you compare to the S corporation. The S corporation is 1.5% of your net profit. So you have a 2 million loss. You do not need to pay. But I said, oh, that's good. Then in this case, yeah, like you mentioned about, S corporation is better than LLC. But uh, you can have a different scenario. For example, you know, the kind in the real estate develop, developer development business. So last year it's a good business for those developers. So it, they have uh, 6 million sales, but that profit, okay, that profit is about uh, uh, $2 million. If you use the S corporation, the $2 million, so you time 1.5%. So you, when you see, hey, that's only thirty thousand dollars. But if you, if the, if the corporation type you use the LLC, so you only need to pay eleven thousand seven hundred ninety dollars. Yeah, both need to add another eight hundred dollars minimum tax on it. Yeah. So that means you use the LLC. Maybe can save you, uh, you know, eight, 18 grand. And it's not that much, but you know, if every year you save you that much, eighteen thousand dollars is still a money. Uh, it uh, also can be a good dinner for your uh, employee, or you can celebrate the, so some uh, birthday party uh, for for your staff. Uh, so, I mean, when you consider what type of the business, suppose you need to choose, yeah, you need to uh, definitely think over and over. Okay, when I talk about it's only California tax issue. So when you see this is small and month, uh, but now we talk about, hey, so the federal tax rate, C corporation, not really bad. Starting the 2018, yeah, for the, uh, I know why this the past two years, the, the stock market is just going crazy. And I know recently this cooled down a bit by the inflation, by the war, uh, by, you know, other other things, uh, COVID nineteen also uh, uh, manufacturers, um, but it's uh, a lot of factors because they reduce the corporation tax rate by how much dramatically. Uh, so we talk about the twenty one percent, but compare before two thousand eighteen. So that's how C corporation looks like. 
So for the first fifty thousand dollars taxable income net, it's a fifteen percent. So for some small business, they're crying. Why? Before, if they incorporate like a C corporation, their income is fifty thousand dollars. They only need to pay fifteen percent. But then nowadays, after two thousand seventeen, small business for if they use the C corporation. There's tax even even increased six percent, not decreased. So then we, but this is really for large corporation. You can see so the the tax rate from a fifteen percent easily jump to a twenty five percent, thirty four percent, and thirty nine percent, then decrease to thirty four, thirty five, then jump to thirty eight, then lock in at the thirty five percent. That's the C corporation tax rate. Uh, tax rate before 2018. So we use the 35 percent. You can see that's the 14 percent decrease after 2017. Before, might be S corporation is a good choice, but after 2017, hmm, maybe C corporation is not a bad idea. Why? Because Let's take a look. Let's take a look at our individual's tax rate. So most people you can know. Let's go to, to uh, uh, my company's website. So if you are being ever visit our company's website, you know, you go to the tax tours, go to the tax rate. Okay, so we click the 2022 tax rate. Okay, you can see your individuals federal tax rate from 10% come to 12%, come to the 22%, 24%, then jump to 32, 35, 37. That's mean your federal tax rate can be as high as 37% if you are individual filing and your taxable income over 539,900. If you are married filing jointly, so your income tax rate can be as high as 37% in the federal level when your income over $647,850. In here, you also can see that's a marriage penalty, right? <laughs> because once single, you know, two single, if they file the return over 539, thousand nine hundred then subject to 37 percent tax rate uh, tax rate but if jointly only six hundred forty seven thousand eight fifty dollars your taxable income subject to 37 percent so that's another <laughs> for the individuals tax planning uh, when you got need to get married or you married in the file file separate or jointly so they also have a separate return hello household re, uh, tax rate but I want you guys to get a little bit of sense. If you're filing married jointly, so your income, all right, if a family income less than $340,000, maybe it's good ideas. You still use a super partnership, partnership, as corporation, because the pass through income is subject to 24% tax bracket. But your income over 340,000. So to the next level, if you keep the income in the C corporation, you will see the C corporation federal is only pay 21%. But the individual levels, you need to pay 32% or even more, 35 or 37. But definitely if you consider a section 199A, 20% deduction, consider, you know, you get a, maybe 20% uh, discount on that, but uh, it's still, that's, hmm, it's uh, maybe six, 7% uh, more if you do the pass-through entity. Okay, so uh, let's go back. Let's go back, okay? So I, today I cannot give you uh, too much details. Um, so I only give you a little bit of just a uh, heads up, you know, when you consider what type of the, Business entity, you you can choose. You want to choose, 
yeah, that's a lot of issues we need to think about, okay? Now, uh, let me talk about uh, my third section. Um, so that's tax issues considered. Actually, I cover a lot, you know, uh, through my uh, presentation so far. Um, so I already mentioned the, the self-employee. Uh, uh, so self-employed person need to put, pay the income tax and the self-employee, self-employment tax. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, you can do some retirement plan uh, during the self-employee part. Uh, but here, uh, one more thing I want to, uh, I want to edit. Uh, so the, for the self-employed tax, um, so for a lot of people, if your salary income, W-2 income, all right, already over $147,000, you won't be really worried about the self-employed tax. Yeah, because the self-employed tax, the 6.2% times two is a 12.4% is limited to your salaries. Uh, up to 147,000, that's for the 2022, uh, but uh, not for the Medicare tax. So the 1.45% times two, like a 2.9%, that's subject to, uh, uh, you know, uh, need to pay, or even you need another 0.8% for the Sir Obama, you know, Medicare surcharge tax. You know, here is a additional, additional Medicare tax is based on, you know, your income is over a certain level, like uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the married jointly, um, one hundred twenty-five thousand for uh, married family separate. So, those one point forty-five percent times two, maybe add another zero point nine percent, might be uh, still need to pay your net self-employee income. Need to also pay this extra, but maybe you can uh, do not worry about this. Uh, 12.4%, uh, which is uh, the 6.2% is supposed when you, you get your paycheck, you know, portion, that's portion paid by yourself. Another 6.2% 6 6 pay your uh, employer, but uh, because you're self-employed, you, you pay double. Uh, but also if your net profit income over 147,000, or you have another W-2, you add it together, you're over this $147,000, you won't need to pay this 12.4% uh, anymore. So um, you also need to put this consideration. Sometimes, you know, when you have earned income, probably it's uh, better for you to uh, do some uh, pension retirement uh, planning, like uh, 401k, uh, simple hour account, DeFi benefit plan, 412i plan, so can make you a uh, shorter, a chunk of the uh, you know taxable money into your pre-tax uh, tax deferral uh, pension account. Okay, partnership is sim similar. Okay, uh, just uh, uh, okay. So I won't be talk, talk uh, too much more. Uh, but uh, those uh, basis allocation uh, this year's seventy two oh three form uh, make a CPA tax professional a uh, nightmare. Uh, you know when they have additional. Uh, filing requirement if uh, partners have uh, foreign uh, transactions of uh, interest. And LLC, uh, LLC, it, uh, uh, I mentioned about, you know, it's all depend on you, uh, what type of uh, entity you choose, single member LLC default by super partnership, uh, then two members can be partnership, corporation, C corp or S corp, it's, uh, it's all you need to uh, talk to a tax professional. Uh, C corporation, I mentioned about that you have double taxation issue. That's mean, you know, you pay 21% in the federal level, but you need to uh, think about, you know, when you one day, if you have a returning uh, dividend to your shareholders, the shareholders might be pay a dividend tax on it. So double taxation, uh, you pay lower tax rate at the, right now because your personal individual tax return at the highest at the 37%. So can make you uh, uh, save some tax bucks uh, for some capital uh, reserve in your, in your business. But later on, that might be can be an issue uh, for the uh, double taxation, you know, for the uh, dividend. But C corporation, um, for me, I think uh, maybe consider S corporation right now, 
it's a uh, one of the most tax efficient vehicle uh, you might be choose if you choose wisely uh, that can be really better off uh, to other uh, entities but you know what it's again it's on depend on what type of business you know you guys are uh, running okay s corporation yeah s corporation the good part is uh, the net income passed through from the s corporation not subject to self-employee tax for small business so that can be saved the 15.3 percent self-employee tax okay so uh okay now i have uh, uh some uh, examples that might be uh, give you guys to take a look okay um i think uh, my time is kind of uh, running out um all right so let's talk about the self-employed tax issue. Uh, so the like super partnership have a W-2 income. Small, uh, this single member LC, 200,000 W-2 income. The S corporation, if they have a $250,000, if I assume this is a uh, Mary jointly return. Um, so uh, we, you know, they all below the 147,000 maybe threshold for self-employed tax. Uh, but, uh, Super partnership and the single member LC, they filed the Schedule C. They filed the Schedule C. Uh, then the Schedule C, they need to be, uh, okay, they need to pay, be, uh, pay the self employee tax on it. But the S Corporation, um, the, the similar, they, they both they have uh, $450,000 income. So, but Super partnership with single member LC, the $450,000 together. All need to pay self-employed tax uh, if they uh, haven't exceeded the threshold yet. So that's mean you can see the self-employed tax here. Uh, so super partnership single member LC they pay need to pay extra twelve thousand, uh, kind of thirteen thousand dollars here. Uh, so you you will see the uh, the the safe uh, is uh, underneath. So uh, that's uh about uh, 8,500 to $10,000, uh, you know, that's a saving if they use the uh, S corporation uh, instead, okay. Uh, also, that's how we uh, call the Obamacare uh, tax too, that's a surcharge 3.8% net uh, investment interest, uh, you know, tax. Uh, this is also, uh, it's, a, it's a super partnership, partnership uh, LC S Corporation is a pass through entity. They need to uh, pay the, uh, you know, NIT tax, but in the corporation level, that's no. But in shareholder level, yes. Okay. And so I already talked about the 199A section 20% uh, deduction. Uh, this can be a um, one hour, two hour section uh, for you guys to know the QBI. Uh, but as, I, as you know, uh, as far as uh, Maybe you already take some advantage because when you receive a K1, uh, when you file the return, your tax uh, advisor already take, um, you know, give you a 20% deduction on that. That's uh, that's uh, your help. Yeah, because only C corporation they drop the tax rate from 35% to a 21%. But uh, uh, individuals highest tax return, uh, the individual high tax rate is only drop from 39.6% to a 37%. And based on the former president's uh, tax law passed, uh, that's would be, you know, back uh, in the 2025. Uh, so or the indi individual tax return will be back to highest point, but the corporation, C corporation will be a permanent change. But we'll see. Uh, I know the current administration, they try to do some uh, uh, changes for the tax law, but uh, this is the current one. Uh, things can be changed uh, even maybe by the yet. So uh, even next year, all the rate I talk about may be different. Okay, like uh, for double taxation issues, uh, this example only uh, focus on the federal level. They didn't uh, mention about the state level. So corporation level is a uh, 21% for C corporation. Uh, and uh, for the S corporation, the 37%. Uh, then after the tax, so, so the individuals, have the uh, after tax income six six hundred thirty thousand dollars, but C corporation 
uh, this also didn't consider the no section 199A deduction available for S corporation. So for the C corporation, okay, so they got a 21%, that's $790,000, uh, you know, income, return earning. So they keep in the C corporation. If they didn't, if they do not have the dividend, they do not need to pay the 23.8% dividend tax in the shareholder level. But when, when the corporation distributes the dividend at the current tax rate, so 20% plus 3.8%, so that's the how much tax the individual level needed to pay in the, in the, for the federal part, okay? So then in this part, so that's $28,000 tax saving. But the uh, situation can be changed if they added the 199A uh, or they can be tax deferred dividend, uh, a tax, you know, dividend, you know, as a deferral. And also the tax rate will be changed maybe next year. You never know. So that's the, just some uh, general uh, example, you know, for your uh, information only. And another thing is, it's a, uh, we also, it's another tax planning consideration is a C corporation can be kind of year or fiscal year, but the most other entities must be kind of year. Okay. What make this, uh, you know, uh, like a more attractive for the C corporation. That's mean when you set up a corporation, like uh, on the December, so you can choose, okay. You, you can choose, Okay, uh, maybe January 31st, 2021 as the physical year end. Or you can choose even November 30, 2021 as your physical year end. Okay, that's mean your deduction. Okay, your deduction, like for composition in this period, in the 2020, in the 2020 return. But uh, if the composition you paid in the January, 2021, that's on your 2021 tax return, not on your 2020s uh, individual tax return. So give you another year to uh, make a adjustment or make a you know, reasonable uh, legally deduction or tax planning on that part. So this is also a beautiful consideration, but you cannot abuse it. Uh, you need to be, you cannot manipulate you know, the timing, okay? Uh, but that's do can really uh, be a consideration. Another new consideration is the PTE tax. It's just a recently signed into law uh, last year. Uh, I mean, because the time limit, I, I, want, I don't want to uh, uh, involve, uh, talk about this too much, but uh, June 15 is another deadline uh, for all the, maybe your CPA tax provider will give you a call before that to see if uh, your business, it's a, uh, beneficial or better off to do the uh, PTE withholding tax. Uh, so, you know, that's try to be, a, um, maybe avoid the sort a limitation for $10,000 in the federal level. So this is a really a good move uh, for the uh, state level uh, to try to be, uh, you know, try to be the California, those wealthy people, they already pay a lot of state tax they can take advantage in the federal level. So I don't want to uh, talk this uh, uh, too much, you know, based on my uh, time frame. Yeah. Okay. So that's all for my today's uh, presentation. Um, so you guys have any any question, uh, no matter in English or Chinese. So I can uh, happy to uh, uh, to answer or in this section or maybe afterward. Thank you, Eric. That was a, that was a very informative. Uh, presentation, a lot of data there, and uh, certainly your website, as you were paging through there, uh, does have a lot of those tables. So for our viewers and those in the room, if you didn't catch all of that, you can go to Eric's website to see some of that data uh, whenever you're getting into that. The first question that we have is, Eric, you referenced a number of times uh, working with your attorney or consulting your attorney. Can you kind of explain how does that work? Do we get you as our CPA and the attorney and, and us and all in the all same, same room, room or, virtual, or virtual or do we or send do we emails or emails kind of what kind of does that look that like in real life for those of us that maybe haven't maybe done, that, done before. that before okay um 
Okay, Christian. Yeah, that's a uh, very good question. Um, okay. Um, so my firm, so we have an office uh, in, uh, uh, you know, I like a six office in the US. I have what, six office in the back in the Asia. So uh, also we have a, a kind of a family office type of uh, uh, practice, have the kind, uh, do some uh, DC tax planning, asset protection planning, uh, also involve those uh, tax planning. Uh, usually when you talk about uh, uh, tax, like uh, uh, planning related to the estate and the asset protection. So we also talk about the insurance trust and the party foundation. Uh, so we work very closely uh, with the uh, uh, tax attorneys. Uh, so we, uh, our firm can be personally have client to uh, serve like a private foundation. We are really an uh, expert in the, uh, the private foundation sector in the Bay Area. Um, uh, but uh, also because we have an office in Asia, like uh, Beijing, Shanghai, Qingdao, Chengdu, uh, Shenzhen, Taipei. So we uh, cover like a uh, course uh, straight, uh, the Chinese Asian uh, community. So they have a uh, uh, business uh, like a uh, uh, Dan uh, mentioned about the the the, the Ding Ding TV. It's uh, like a cross bridge, a connect uh, east to the west. So we are considered like a uh, maybe family doctor, or uh, for all those uh, clients. So when you have come to all those uh, uh, tax financial related uh, questions, you come to uh, our uh, firm uh, first. So if you have some uh, a particular uh, area we, we do not cover, we do not serve. So we may be forward to um, the kind, to the expertise in that uh, area. So usually it's kind of like a regional type of uh, family office type. Thank you for that. You for for that. our for staff, staff, are there, are there any, any other questions, questions online, online, online that you can read for us? We don't have any questions online. Okay, so we do have one more question for you. Our last question, Eric, is, uh, again, you did show us uh, your website and your contact information. Can we assume that you're accepting new clients and if any of our viewers today uh, would like your help, they could get in touch with you? Uh, yes, sure, Christian. <laughs> yeah, we do have, a, like in Bay Area, we do have an office in Mia Peters. I think uh, my partner, Sir Kony Zhang, uh, this morning also presented in this event uh, on the site in the Ding Ding TV as headquarter. Uh, by the way, also here I try to be say uh, thank you and appreciate for the organizers uh, for the Chaozhou uh, Foundation um, and also for uh, Papa and the Ding Ding TV and also you know Dan and the Christian. Thank you for you guys wonderful uh, hosts you know organize for this kind of event. So you always can come to us uh, for uh, you know for the like a tax or financial accounting and uh, auditing and the consulting services, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank we you appreciate sir. you so much. We appreciate you being here. We are gonna take just a brief moment before we start with our next session. So don't go too far away, but this is a good time to get up and stretch if you've been sitting all day. Maybe uh, get something to drink. If you're at home or you're in the office, it's a good time to get another cup of coffee or some caffeine or even just a water. Good time to run time to, to the run bathroom, to the bathroom. And, uh, and uh, but we will be back in just a moment, so don't go too far away. Uh, for our staff, do we have the next speaker online? Can someone give me a thumbs up at the door? Are they ready to go? Okay, if you'll give it just a brief moment, we are going to start momentarily for all of our guests online and those in the room, don't go too far away. We're getting ready to go here. Okay, we are okay, back we are with back some with introductions. Some so if you're, uh, if you're just across the room getting that coffee or that soda, that's okay. Uh, you got another moment before the great information comes on, but I am gonna give you some important information. Uh, again, my name is Christian Malesic. I've been with you all afternoon here as your moderator and your host, as part of the wonderful team and partnership that has put this together. I am the president and CEO of the Silicon Valley Central Chamber of Commerce, and we're about business. 
and uh, making business better tomorrow than it was today. We're not the only partner that's part of this whole team that made these wonderful speakers and everything happen here today. Uh, we also have to thank CBC for being here, the Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce, Asian Inc., the U.S. China Chamber of Commerce, Silicon Valley, Minority Business Development Agency, Ethnic Media Services, UN Media, CBC Life Financial Services, and of course you just heard from one of our partners, Eric Jong and Associates. We have a whole lot more for you today, actually four more sessions. We're getting ready to start uh, one of those sessions. We're very pleased to have a representative directly from Governor Gavin Newsom's office. Of course, uh, the governor's office and the state of California has been very positive and in favor of growth of businesses here in California, especially uh, all of us coming out of the pandemic and how difficult this has been. Uh, our interim deputy director, who is a, an appointee of the Office of the Small Business Advocate, Kit. Again, Again, Governor, Governor Gavin, Newsom's Gavin Newsom's office is here is to here talk to you about, you about uh, uh, some, some very, very interesting, interesting, particularly support and procurement, and procurement training. training. Now, before, now, before I, introduce I introduce our speaker, our speaker I, do I do want to introduce our interpreter. Our interpreter. And if you can come we forward, come we have, we with, have with us Mary Ann Cheney. Cheney. She, is she is going to be interpreting, so we will have a dual language opportunity here. I'm going to pass the microphone to Mary Ann in just a moment, but before I do, we have online and ready to go, Chris Earl. Chris, how you Chris, doing? How you Welcome doing? to our presentation, our presentation today. today. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Hi, Chris. Hi. Have you online the other end? Because of our translation system, the reason is we have two sessions that are being recorded. So we have to do a voiceover of voice over. We have to do a voiceover of voice over. 啊、呃，希望大家啊啊、呃呃，就是可能会花多一点时间，但是呃 ，hopefully， 呃，对那些听不到、听不太懂英文的听众呢，这个翻译可以帮助到你们。So, uh, we we were doing a simultaneous translation because the translation system. I'm going to do translation as you speak. So we slow down the pace a little bit, and now, uh, after you finish an idea, I will uh translate to Mandarin Chinese. Okay. All right. Nice. You as well. Um, all right, so uh, kicking off here. Yeah, I'm sorry. Give you a very quick uh, introduction in Chinese. Gotcha. Uh, 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 Chris Earl, uh, 呃，那他呢是在就是如何获得州政府政府援助项目这个方面是非常专业的一位专家，因为他是实际操作帮助很多的中小企业来获得加州政府的这个援助项目。他今天会给我们做一个在呃比较 general 的，在一个大范围的一个呃刚提纲挈领的一个介绍。那也欢迎大家呢在会后和中间呃提问，这样的话可以就自己关心的一些问题。呃，向他寻寻取呃，寻求意见建议。OK， go ahead， go ahead。All right， thank you everyone for having me， and I really appreciate the opportunity to share programs and resources out of the state of California。嗯，可以有这个机会向大家介绍加州政府可以为中小企业提供一些资源。So first off, um, again, I, I represent the Office of the Small Business Advocate, and my name is Chris Earl. As I mentioned before, I am serving as the Acting Deputy Director, but I also have a regional role of Southern California Regional Advisor um, under the state's director, Tara Lynn Gray. First, I and our office, we focus on three things. Um, first of which is providing information and resources to small businesses. Um, and we do that through a myriad of ways. Um, secondly, uh, we focus on advocacy for small business and, and that could come in the form of um, bill creation or uh, 
advocating for funding for small businesses, similar to the COVID-19 relief grant program, which was one of those programs out of our office. And the third thing we like to focus on, or we primarily focus on is resilience uh, for businesses. Um, just understanding the climate and the environment living in California, we always have to have resilience um, at, our, at the forefront of our strategic planning. 首先就是为各种企业提供有效的资源 I think I missed the third point uh, Resiliency for small businesses, disaster and resiliency Really being helping businesses stay prepared for that 第三就是帮助企业能够度过他们的困难时期 Right, and today I wanted to talk about a few different things. Um, obviously, I will talk about procurement, but I also wanted to talk about funding because I know everyone likes to hear about different uh, resources and funding available to businesses. So I'll, I'll definitely touch on those. And so first of which um, I wanted to talk about was the California Micro Business Grant Program. Um, and this was just a $50 million grant allotment for um, eligible micro businesses. This is really focused on street vendors and solopreneurs, those that are, are very small, less than five employees, very low revenue levels. So this grant program was really focused on the smallest of the small businesses. 首先我们今天介绍的第一个项目就是加州的微型企业在新冠疫情之后的支援计划这个计划呢一共是五千万的资金它主要是针对于特别小型的企业和生意比如说是像小的餐馆或者这种家庭企业和生意 I'm, I'm curious if there's any attack for each applicant? Um, so because this one's aimed at street vendors, they're looking for those that um, we're looking at revenue levels like under 50K. So we're looking at the very, very small with this group of this pot of funding. Um, and it's a, mm -hmm. and we're looking at we're partnering with our counties throughout the state to, to run these programs out. So they'll be coming out through the different counties, but the funding comes from our office. For the for the street vendor, yes. So for those street vendors or out, you know, food or uh, food vendors, those types. So they're looking at fifty k as the the cap on the revenue. Um, so they're really looking for the smallest of the small, and that's because those those members weren't eligible for the larger grants, and so we wanted to dedicate dedicate some funding for them as well. 所以这个项目是为我们在微型企业，那基本上就是说是在年年营营销额在五万以下的这种很小型的，比如说是一个呃一个food and so yes, that a, that a complete micro business. And the next program I wanted to talk about is an innovation focused program. Um, this is called our Inclusive Innovation Hubs. Um, the state um, has designated 10 regions across the state um, to serve as regional hubs to help stimulate um, economic development and job creation for innovation focused uh, companies. Um, now we started off with 10 initial hubs but within the governor's new proposal, we are proposing to add three additional hubs, which would take our total number to 13. And along with that, we will be adding um, seed funding um, through those hubs to supply to support small businesses coming through the, each of these respective hubs. So they'll not only get program funds to operate this hub program, but they'll also get seed capital to give to their small businesses that they're supporting. 
第二个我要介绍的项目呢，我们叫包容性创新交流中心。现在呃，整个加州我们已经开放了是十个，我们现在考虑再另外增加三个，这样呃，总共一共到十三个这样的建呃交交流中心。通过这个交流中心呢，我们会提供呃 seed funding， 就是种子呃资金。来给一些创新企业，我们希望通过这些呃投标投资来促进企业的创新。All right, and with the, the new proposal,、uh, we are asking to increase the program funds from 2.5 million is what it's currently at to 26.5 million. So we're we're asking for a significant increase in this program. To further stimulate technology and commercialization,、um, tech transfer, and and really、um, minority engagement into these innovation hubs, and how do we how do we stimulate that job growth? And so these are these are some of the areas through this program that we're really focused on, as well as、um, venture capital and angel capital、um, really finding its way to these small businesses. May I clarify? You said you were、uh, increasing from 2.5 million to 26.5 million. Correct. That's per, That's per program, program or total? total? That's total. That's total programming. So this initial year, they gave us 2.5 for the 10 hubs. So that's 10, 250 each.、Um, and so with this new one, they are proposing to do 26.5.、Um, it'll remain at. So each hub will get one million, four years in program funds, which will total one million dollars. Plus, they'll get an additional, I believe it's 500k annually to provide seed capital grants or startup grants to their businesses coming through their hubs or being supported through their hubs. And I think they get to do five fund five businesses each year. Um, 总共给个十个，现在的已经有的呃创创新中心，我们可能还有另外还有五十万美元增加。But、this is very interesting, Chris. I'm just trying to understand better. I'm sure the audience want to hear that too. It's like with with the funding, how how does how does it how does it work? <laughs> Right. So、um, the the beauty of it is the program details have not been written as of yet.、Um, but we know through the May 12 revise, the governor、um, announced a couple two Fridays ago.、Um, we do know that this is going to be one of the newer programs.、Um, however, we're looking at. The program side of it will be very similar to how it's currently ran, so that increase of funding won't change there. But we will have a recompete process, so those ten hubs that we have designated now will have to recompete、um, if everything's approved by the legislature.、Um, and so at that time, we will have a statewide.、Uh, Application process. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to be rolled out, but we will have a, a application process, and then we would be、um, on the hook to designate 13 hubs throughout the state. Obviously, Silicon Valley would be would get a hub itself. We just,、um, but that's dependent on the partners that apply for the program. So,、um, you know, it's it's an it's kind of like an optional thing. We 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 are on the hook to designate 13, but the community has to apply for the funds as well. So. So, so、um, that's that's part of what I do now is making sure that you know folks are aware of the opportunities coming up and what what potential can be grown from those opportunities. So this is one where you could you know set up an ecosystem to support、um, small businesses around innovation, maybe a certain industry sector, maybe there is a certain gap within support services for innovation companies. Um, or it could be a collection of things that provides education, connection to resources, funding, venture capital, things of that nature as well. So it could vary,、um, but we really want like a real holistic、um, or like a real hub type of environment that can cover all aspects of what the business needs, even workforce as well. Okay,、uh, two clarific. Thank you very much. Two clarifications.、Um, the funding is annually or total. Uh, right. So the anticipation is that this 26.5 million will be rolled out. So the so each of the respective hubs will most likely get an agreement or a contract、um, that will span over 
um, I would say four years. And so they would there would be some type of reimbursement process over a period of time. So I'm not sure if the, it would it would not be like a front loaded situation. It would be most likely a cost reimbursement type of program. Um, but yes, each each program would be under contract for essentially a million dollars each for the program side. And then each year annually, I believe that's how they receive the seed capital. So that's the, so that's the annually, annually seed capital, capital for that right. Much, that much. Right. For about four to six years, did you say that? Um, the designation is five years. Um, the funding is for four. Funding for four. Okay. So it's a million dollars, 250K each year. Um, we have not written out explicitly how we're going to roll the funds out. So it could be a combination. There could be a, a front load portion. It could vary. We're still working. Those details are very open to feedback on that. But um, that's essentially what we're thinking in terms of how the funding will roll out um, is, you know, we want to make sure that the organizations are there long term so that they can set up and build these partnerships and relationships and build out these efforts. Um, so we want to make sure that they're they're solidified and they have that sustainable funding um, and the seed capital can rotate in each year. But we haven't got to that far that that down into the details yet. But um, but yeah, that's that's the track we're going. So, yeah, great question. Okay. 我们在选选址和挑选参与的企业过程当中，会上非非常欢迎大家的参与。而且我们希望每个hub当会将会建成一个自成一体的这样一个生态系统，中间可能呃我们以政府投资的形式支持相关的和呃嗯的企业共同合
for at no cost, train your staff, your existing staff for your business. Um, and that you don't have to be only a small business for that. That's also for medium and large size businesses as well. So that's also a piece of the IHUB that we we are also, you know, really want to push hard is the workforce piece. So absolutely we 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 like the creative ideas, so we, we're never we don't try to be too prescriptive with the location and things like that. Okay. Uh 我刚刚就是代表观众提了一个问题，就是说想问Chris，就是这十三这十个或者未来十三个地址的选择，就是他们他们的目标或者是愿景是什么样的，就是怎么样来选择，或者是说嗯呃想象中应该是一个具体的一
。下一个我想呃特别介绍的项目呢，我们叫做加州场地援助项目。那这个项目呢，一共是呃一亿五千万呃资金总额，然后每一位申请者可以获得二十五万美元。或者就是呃低于他不不超过他们年呃营销营营收的百分之二十的资金，嗯、um, ，I sorry I kind of miss a little detail. Do you do you say what the approval process is that um is that is that just an application or is it easy approval or what what what? Oh yeah, so so what's what's happened is um. We had our initial round, um, and so that round closed, and so we we received feedback from, you know, just from all over the place about the program, and so um, legislature allows us an opportunity to make updates to the programs and things of that nature, and so we're going through that process, and um, so we're looking at to make it more expansive to allow more people. Um, maybe the guidelines that were originally set. In place were a little too stringent. Um, not sure what the the impetus was for that, um, but they do allow for us to make updates to the different programs if we see a need to improve it. Um, and in this case, we want to make sure that as many people are eligible as possible. So that's what this change is all about. It's just making more people eligible for the funding. Okay. Do you have the updated eligibility? Uh, it has not been posted um, by the California Legislature as of yet. You are you are getting the the up to date up to minute information. <laughs> okay. What, what, so, what, what, when is that expected? When is that expected? Uh, it could be any day. It could be tomorrow. It could be Monday. I mean, that's how it's fluid right now. Um, yeah. 这个项目呢，因为可能去年有一些呃企业主是熟悉的，然后已经领到这个二十五万的 funding， 但是也有可能因为当时原来的呃要求审核要求相对比较严格，那他们政府呢，因为收到了各方面的回馈，认为对这个项目应该放松审核的要求，所以现在呃加州政府正在重新制定这个呃场地援助项目的一一个呃审批标准。听起来应该是会降低标准，也就是说会让他的申请审批更加容易。所以请大家呢，就是及时更新了解，呃，应可说不定很快你们的公司也可以符合这个二十五万的申请。Um, what what was the old one like, and what are the typical own, uh, business owners who will qualify for this program in particular, or what's it designed for? I, my oh, it was uh, for for live event venues. So if you if you have an open stage and you do performances at your location, such as like a um, like an amphitheater, like an outside amphitheater, or uh, think about Coachella. <laughs> <laughs> for example, or um, somewhere, or even um, not restaurants, but there are some places that have like live uh, live bands and performances and things of that nature. Those will all be eligible. Um, so like a live theater um, that does performances and things of that nature. Um, you know, not motion picture theaters, but <laughs> but like but like a live theater that maybe has ballet or tap or, or dance or something. Like an outdoor summer camp or a wedding venue or winery. Um, not sure of the wineries. Um, I, 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 yeah, there's. I would have to share. Yeah, we would have to go and look at the existing list. I'm not sure if wineries um, per se were on there, but there's this big thing about it having to have like a stage for performance. Um, so, so that's one of the kickers. So some restaurants that do live performances are like full service restaurants that do live performances are eligible. Um, and so I think that's where a lot of the ambiguity came was because you had some that were okay in this area and then you had some that weren't. And so we just really wanted to make that more blanket so that um, more people were eligible. So I think with the updated changes, those groups or those individuals you pointed out, they would be eligible under these new changes. I think it was, um, you know, it's a little bit more uh, challenging before. Wonderful. 呃、uh, ，我刚刚就是希望了解清楚这个项目呢，是为哪一类型的生意来设计，或者是说特别想呃支持哪一类。他说到，因为我们叫场地援助项目，就是 venue。那什么样是 venue 呢？就是特别是像那种呃公开的表演场地。
呃外呃室外的呃影院，或者是有部分的餐厅，它如果本身带有表演场地的，那可能就是属于符合这个这个项目的。所以，如果您是做这这方面的生意，或者有这样的一个场地，因为疫情的缘故，很多的聚会都被取消了，那我相信您的生意肯定是受到了影响。那您可以考虑申请加州的这个二十五万的这个场地援助项目。Wonderful. Right. We can keep right. Going. All right. The next program I have here is the California Dream Fund. Um, this is a brand new program just uh, just released a couple months ago. Um, this one is a one-time thirty-five million dollar grant program, and this one's aimed to provide seed startup grants of up to ten thousand um, dollars for small businesses within California. Um, what we are classifying as a new business is any company that started after July 1 of 2019. Um, so that means you, you, you know, you're after July 1, 2019, it, it constitutes you're eligible for, for this funding. Um, the only requirements of this program is that obviously, A, you must go and register your business and file all the appropriate documentation. Um, but secondly, there's a required training program that you must complete with one of our 17 participating um, centers um, that are that are part of our technical assistance network. Um, I, I can share the link here in, um, in the chat as well, um, but there are, there should be there should be centers and our sub centers are helping support and amplifying that. But there's, there are 17 centers that we have designated to run to run these cohorts through. And upon completion of the programs, um, the small businesses do get the grant funds. They don't they don't get a lottery ticket. It's once they're in the training program and they complete the training program, they are they are entitled to those funds. There isn't like a lottery system or anything like that. So the real challenge is making sure that you know people are getting into the training programs because I would imagine those are probably filling up pretty quickly. But um, but yeah, this is a great program. Um, I wish there was more allocation we could put towards it, but yeah, I mean, ten thousand dollars in seed grants um, to start your business is a is a good deal. So um, yeah, there's not much else to add to that one. Yeah. Oh. oh, oh, oh clarification again. Was a training program? How long mm -hmm. is it? Um, oh, so what is in it? Right. So because we have a we have a technical assistance network of about 89 centers across the state. And so each of those centers has a different, I guess, focus area for supporting small businesses. So we have some procurement focused centers. We have some that are focused in access to capital. So they all they focus is small business financing. We may have some that are focused in construction or tech and innovation. Um, so based on that focus of that center, we let them develop and craft their own type of program that fits their scope. Um, as long as it meets our overall guidelines. And we and we just said that it had to be between eight, I think it's eight and 12 weeks or six and 12 weeks. Um, and we just put like some programmatic pieces in there, um, but it's really basics. It's fundamental stuff to how to start your business. You know, it's not anything too great in detail. We just really want to give these folks a real good foundation starting off so that they'll get some support in entrepreneurial mindset, um, how to go about incorporating their business and setting their business up, whether that's the LLC, S Corp, what have you. Um, there'll probably be some marketing and e-commerce, depending on the feel of the center, because if it's, if it's a pre, uh, procurement type of center, they're not going to focus on the e-commerce or marketing or anything like that. So I think it varies on the center, but we, we, we gave them some very key guidance in terms of what we want them to have when they complete um, these training programs. So um, in terms of the specificity of it, we're looking, we're, it's really foundational education and we just want them to get that, that learning. So when they start with this 10,000, they have, they have the foundation already there, you know, and so then me, oh, go ahead. Uh, let me summarize. Uh, for the company who uh, filed after July 1st, 2019, is qualified to apply, mm -hmm. and they have to go through the training program, and then they can get $10,000 from the government as a seed fund. 
to mm -hmm. uh, start. And the total fund for this whole uh, California Dream Fund is $35 million. Correct. Which, which, do you know how far we'll go uh, until? Um, that I'm not sure of. Um, and how much money has already been sent out and how much are retained? Well, oh, so well, not, it's new. It's only a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing, yeah. Oh, we no, started. Yeah, just started. No, no awards have been issued yet. So um at this point it's just folks are loading up or trying to get into training programs so i would suspect that's that's what's happening right now um but yeah um, the industry was selected as the intermediary so they'll be dispersing um they validate the companies and disperse the funds and so um yeah no funds have been dispersed as of today but um but yeah i would imagine um here in the coming weeks maybe a couple months you'll start to see that start to roll out uh, and we're under, and we we do report out this data and information as well. So we make it all public. So great. Uh, great. 刚刚我们讲了很多，实际上的我们都是在讲现在加州政府最新推出的一个援助计划，我们叫加州梦想呃基金。那这个梦想基金呢，它是针对帮助最就是新的企业。那小企业如果是在二零一九年七月一号以后成立的，都可以申请这个梦想基金。它的呃金额是一万元每个每一个小企业，实际上是帮助想创业的这一部分的呃小企。业。那他们呃最关键的部分呢，就是在你申请的过呃申请之后呢，你必须呃通过加州政府提供的一个一个训练一个过过程呃 training program。那这个训练呢，通常都是在六到十二周，根据每个不同的 training center， 全加州一共有八十九个。那通呃可能你会找到更适合您的行业或者是地理位置的这样一个 training center。通过他们一个 training program 之后呢，呃政府因为希望你们拿到这个。资金，然后可以了解如何去成立公司和最简单，比如说去怎么样去准备市场推广，准呃公司的成立，会提供这方面一些训练，然后希望帮助你们可以成功。嗯，这个项目因为是呃最新刚刚推出，然后总资金是三千五百万，所以大家有兴趣的现在马上就可以到他们的网站上去申请。Chris, this is a five-minute warning, five warning for you. Oh, okay. All right, let me speed this up. All right, um, next one here is the California Nonprofit Performing Arts Grants Program. This is a one-time $50 million uh, grant allotment to provide grants of up to $75,000 to eligible nonprofit performing arts organizations. And this is focused around workforce development. So this funding will go to workforce and employee-related costs. Um, and and as I can see here on the screen, I won't go into all of the eligible uses of funds, but um, again, um, this, this grant isn't typical of ours. This is uh, more of the workforce field, but again, we, we're putting a lot of emphasis in supporting the, the growth of the workforce side. So this program has not started. We are looking to, I, my estimation is that June, we'll have an announcement in June when this date will start to, when we will start accepting applications. But this one, the industry has been selected as the third party intermediary. So they'll be running the program and there'll be a program landing page and site for this that'll be announced very soon. 最后我们要介绍的一个项目是非盈利表演艺术援助项目。这个项目的总总资金是五千万，然后每每一次投放是七万五，呃，主要是针对于表演艺术项目的，嗯。我们会有一些，呃，现在我们的荧幕上面也有一些，就是具体的金额。啊 ，I'm I'm curious what will be defined. 嗯，呃，这个项目是从今年六月份开始申请，目前还没有，但是马上就要开始。Uh, you know, we, in in the in the Chinese community, obviously, we have performing arts. We also have some, you know, like say like kung fu or, uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, were those all considered as performing arts? As uh, that is my interpretation. Yes. 我我刚刚提了一个问题，就是说一个，就是我们在华人的社区里面，因为还有很多像类似于，比如说功夫啊，就是这样的的非主流的一些表演项目，是不是也能够符合？然后 Chris 肯 confirm 说也是可以的。OK。Yep. And um, just additional, um, in terms of procurement, we do have a uh, procurement initiative, which is called Source Diverse, Source Local, which is aimed at 
focusing our government contracted dollars from our partners at DGS and Caltrans to focus on California based companies. Um, we as a state contract a lot and we do a lot of business out of the state. Um, which is a bit excessive um, from our from the governor's standpoint. And so we want to have a renewed focus on contracting and doing business with companies that are California based. Um, and so part of my role is developing training programs for that. And it's called Source Diverse, Source Local. Um, I'll put the link to that page in the chat here. Um, but again, we will be running regional cohorts throughout the state. Um, and I will have to get the local center for your region, but there will be cohorts running in every part of the state that will be developing training around procurement, the basics of uh, access to capital, procurement based capital, teaming and partnerships, um, insurance and bonding, as well as uh, general growth and business, um, business management for, you know, a lot of the back office operational needs are things that are challenges for businesses to manage. Um, in the uh, contracting space. And so with that, um, for the sake of time, you can just contact me directly and I can um, get you all connected with the, the partners in your region or your respective centers. Um, but with that, I'll, I'll wrap it up here and I'll put my contact information in the chat. Uh,我的主要的工作呢，就是呃，帮助呃，加州的企业来获得政府的援助和支持。所以我们也有一些项目是专门针对于在加州的公司和企业的。所以我想特别的鼓励，如果您现在在加州有经营公司的话，呃，
today's session is some of you have made it all day and we are so excited for you to have been with us and stayed with us all day. We too have two more wonderful sessions. We should be done a little bit before 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time. That's at least our schedule and we, we are pretty much on schedule. The two topics that are coming up is uh, really one of my favorite topics uh, from my days of uh, taking my master's class, my MBA, Master of Business Administration, and that's talking about risk management. Uh, one could argue that the job of a business executive is every day making a decision about how risky of a decision do you want to make today in this moment. And as soon as you make that decision, then there's the next one and the next one. So we'll be talking a little bit about risk financing and understanding your options. How aggressive do you want to be and what are the possible ramifications of that? Or uh, Maybe you don't want to be so aggressive and uh, no risk, no reward. So there's a balance for each one of us. We'll be ending up the day uh, with one of our partners coming from Asian Inc. talking about applying for government contracts. So there's a lot going on with that and we're, we're really excited uh, to be talking about those two additional topics today. Just checking in with staff to see how we're doing on our next speaker. You can't see it on camera, but I have a whole team that's kind of on the other side of the camera uh, that's in the control room, and they're working hard, working with speakers. They're on the on the phone and on the computers, and they're working sound boards and cameras. And so, uh, unfortunately, they picked this face to be the face on this side of the camera. You think they would have picked somebody prettier, but uh, you got me today. And my name is Christian Malesic. I'm the president and CEO of the Silicon Valley Central Chamber. As we move into our next section, let me tell you about our partners. We have some wonderful partners that have brought this all together. They've been part of finding the speakers and assembling the topics. It, it wasn't just about donating money. That, that's important and that helps. But it was about the people who got the ideas together to say, what topics do we need to help small business and entrepreneurs to exceed and succeed? And some of the people that help that do that are UN Media, CBC, Life Financial Service, Eric Jong and Associates was here, Ethnic Media Service, CBC helped us out quite a bit, Minority Business Development Agency, the Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce, the U.S. China Chamber of Commerce, Silicon Valley Chapter, Asian Inc., who will be our last presentation of the evening, or afternoon rather. We have two coming up, the next one and one after that. And of course, the organization that I'm very proud and honored to be the president and CEO, that is the Silicon Valley Central Chamber of Commerce. So without that wonderful group of people, we couldn't have done what we're doing today, and we certainly appreciate you being here. Appreciate you being here. We are still waiting for our speaker, so this is a good time. If, uh, like I've said before, if you need to run to the bathroom or get yourself a drink or if nothing else, just get up and stretch a little bit, especially if you've been sitting all day. Uh, this is a good time to do that. We will be back with you momentarily. As I said, there's a whole team of people trying to make this happen, and um, we're moments out from that happening. Bear with us, please. Bear with us, please. Bear with us, please.
While we're waiting for our next speaker, the uh, staff has asked me to maybe share a few words with what we do here at the Silicon Valley uh, Central Chamber of Commerce. And what we do is we help you to be better at business tomorrow than you were today. And we do that a lot of ways. Uh, we've, we've spent a lot of time thinking about how do your fellow business leaders in Silicon Valley, how do they help you succeed? Whether you're a small tech business or whether you're a media studio or whether you make furniture or you're in your visual business or maybe the IT business maybe you do nail salon or comb hair I need help with that one um, no matter what you do no matter what kind of business you're in we come together in the Chamber of Commerce to help business together to help us all grow together and we really figured out how to do that in three words we advocate we educate we educate and we connect so we advocate so by we advocate looking at the by local at business the climate, business particularly climate, in government. Particularly and uh, government. we've heard from a lot of we've wonderful partners of today wonderful at various partners levels partners of government, levels government of who have been doing good things to help government. Unfortunately, it's not always that way. A lot of times when the school board or the city or the county or even the state starts talking to each other about business, things are usually going to look bad for us as businessmen and women. They're going to raise taxes or make something more difficult for us. And so part of what we do at the chamber is we advocate. We're in those rooms for you so that you don't have to be there. We educate. We educate. Today's a perfect example of that. That's why we're so pleased to be with you and, and promoting this event, promoting it to our members. A number of our members are online with you today and allowing you to see what it is the chamber does. We do this every day. Uh, we do it in different ways. Um, sometimes we do it by getting groups together and that's the connect piece. Bringing people together so that you can meet your next buyer, you can meet your next seller, you can meet your next mentor, your accountant, your lawyer, that's what we do. And I'm told that I'm done buying time. If you haven't figured out what I was up to, I was trying to buy a little time there. And our speaker is online, so we're we're very excited to have them. Uh, we're going to be talking about enterprise and risk financing right now. And from Magstone Law LLP, we are so proud to have with us Mandy Lai. And interpreting for Mandy Lai, once again, is going to be our hot and super great interpreter. You're not interpreting. You're not interpreting. 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 We, we change speakers. We change speakers. We have Shaiyan Jung. Okay, very good. We have Shaoyan Jung is going to be with us. Thank you so much. Uh, Shaoyan Jung is a data scientist. He's the chairman of the SBIR grant review panel, a senior business advisor. And we're going to be talking about how to get dilution-free resource and development resources from the government for startups. Again, our interpreter is Marianne Cheney, and she will be with you live interpreting into Mandarin Chinese. This is Xiao Yin Zheng. Hello,大家好,张教授你好 因为我是临时上阵哈，然后如果我有在technical方面解释不准确的地方，我欢迎您随时指正。好，谢谢，谢谢，可以开始了，谢谢，可以开始了，谢谢，可以开始了，谢谢。呃，谢谢大家，呃
对，呃，感谢大家。今天我非常高兴有这个机会跟大家分享，就是政府的小企业科技转化和小企业创新研究基金。呃，我这样说可以哈。然后就是我们简写成为 STTR 和呃 ASBIR 这两个 program。嗯。<咳>对我呃不知道有哪些听众可能是已经了解这个 program 的。Okay, so thanks. I'm gonna start quickly. Everybody, can everybody see my PowerPoint? Can Can you see it so I can? 对，可以，可以，可以看到。可以看到哈，我把这样这样是不是更好一点 ？Is this better? Uh, 不是 full screen， 是只有两两个 slide， 是一个 screen， 可能字比较小。哦 ，OK， 还是对，还是刚才那个更好，可能是吧 ？The one. So maybe I will stop this one. Still using. Um, let me see. And share the screen. Oh, wait a minute. Why I can't see that? That I just didn't give you a proper introduction to Dr. Zhang Professor. I'm in this process of giving you a brief introduction to Dr. Zhang Professor. Dr. Zhang Professor is a successful entrepreneur. He is a data scientist. He has been a successful entrepreneur for many years. He is the CEO of KIT Solutions LLC. 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 从一九九六年创业至今，那在呃，他他在嗯九，他曾经有多次获得美国政府的呃援助项目的这呃成功经申请援助项目的成功经验，所以我们今天特别的邀请到他。那他还是呃美国健康及社会公共呃事务呃呃中心支持的一个呃。abuse 项目当中啊，负责负责呃主任的工作。Okay, can can everybody see the slide now? Is that good? Is that good? My PowerPoint. Yes, Xiao Ye. Yes. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go. We'll start. Thank you for your attention. And as we all know. Anybody want to start a, a company is a challenge, and uh, and especially the finance. How do we get money to get something started? This is always a challenge. So beyond the personal family and friends who can maybe, you know, can I find some money to start in this venture? You know, beyond just your family and relation, you know, your your family and friends. Um, that's always a challenge. 大家都知道，创业是一件很艰难的事情，尤其是怎么样融资、获得资金，这是呃所有的挑战当中最难的一个。So there are usually three sources, right? You can have venture capital, but venture capital investment, the only interest in the ventures that has a huge market potential. And the VC also has a very short turnaround time to pay to pay back to the investors. So another thing is VC also takes significant, sometimes controlling equity. 我们最最通常想到的融资方式就是通过风险投资，但是风险投资呢有几个问题，就是首先，呃，它只关注于有比较大的市场份额的项目；第二呢，它有一个很短时期的一个投资回报期待；第三，呃 ，V 呃，风险投资通常会在收成当中呃取取得很大的一部分的股份。那么作为一个 alternative, so as an alternative, another way to fund your startup is this SBIR, STTR grant. It offers a alternative financial support for start to the startups. 
，所以我们今天要讲的就是作为风险投资的一个另类的融资方法，就是通过政府的小企业科技转发基金和小企业创新研究中呃资金。The Small Business Innovation Research and Small Business Technology Transfer Grant are particularly especially designed to promote technology innovation. And small business participation in the federal spending, so that's the the key. Every year, as you know, federal government spends a lot of money, and and the mostly the bigger company, you know, took the lion's share. So this program is to try to help small business to get a piece of action. 这两个基金是联邦政府特别设计来援助小小企业做科技创新的。我们都知道，政府在科技创新方面要每年投入大量的资金，那其中呢，很大一部分确实是进入了就是已有的现成的大型企业当中。但是这两个项目呢，是专门希望在所有的就是创新基金当中导入到中小企业部分的。It's estimated. You know, you can see、uh, this number here. For fiscal year 2018, there are about three billion dollars are allocated.、Uh, as a matter of fact, the required by Congress by law that every federal agency who participated in this SBIR STTR program must allocate at least used to be three percent, but now I think. Go up to five percent of their total annual budget into this program. 根据二零一八年美国小企业管理局的数据，当年他们投入到呃，就是这两个小小的科技基金里面的总资金，一共是二十个呃亿和三十个亿。那呃，事实上呢，是呃，美国国会和法律规定，每一个美国联邦机构在他们的开支里面有百分之三，现在是提高到百分之五的比率，需要投投入到这个小企业科技。转化和小企业创新研究资金，就是有三到五个呃比例的呃联邦基金一定要进入到扶持小企业创新。Therefore, this is a very important、uh, research, you know, R and D、uh, money for、uh, startups, especially in the early stage when many most of venture capital. Think is too dangerous and too risky to invest. So, we can see that this fund is very important for startups. It is a very important investment in the early stage. Another important thing about this program is the small business, the, the innovate, innovators, and small business will retain the intellectual property. It is very important, the IP right. Um, so it is very competitive, but this program is a very is ideal R and D resource for startup companies. 这个项目还有一个很重要和有价值的特性，就是获得这个项目援助的企业可以完全保留自己产品和设计的知识产权。从这一点上来讲，对于很多初创企业，他们可能在接受风投的时候会有这样一个 struggle， 就是可能他们要分享他们的呃知识产权，但是政府的资助是不要求知识产权的分割的。There are three phases of this SBIR STTR grant program. Phase one,、um, the object of phase one is to conduct a feasibility study. Of a proposed innovation, usually in six to twelve months,、uh, with a funding level from fifty thousand dollar to two hundred fifty thousand dollar. 嗯，这两个基金呢，呃，都有三个阶段。第一个阶段是可行性，第二个阶段是有效性，第三个阶段是商业化。呃，第一个阶段呢，通常是六到十二个月的时间，嗯，然后是获得能获得的资金量是五万到二十五万。The phase two, uh, which focus on efficacy, um, study of the phase one innovation, and to prepare for commercialization. And usually you have two years period, and you can asking a funding 
uh, up to 1.7 million, and in some situations, even higher. Uh,第二个阶段是呃创新有效性的考核。这个阶段就是是基于第一阶段的呃想法，然后是为第三个阶段的商业化来做准备。呃，是大约是时长是两年的时间。呃，获得的资金可以到呃一百七十万。Phase uh, three, the objective is to commercialize innovation resulted from the phase one and phase two. And at this time, federal government no longer provide any additional financial support, but they will make recommendation and help you to connect with uh, bigger companies. 第三个阶段是产品商业化阶段，在这个阶段，呃，公司不再获得政府的资金援助，但是会获得呃，就是帮助联络呃，networking，提供呃一些社会资源和呃社会支持。So you can see this is a very attractive program. You can get money, uh, almost like free R and D money, uh, and you still retain your intellectual property. But because of that, it is very competitive. So if you want to, uh, if you want to get the grant funding, uh, you have to know how to uh, do it and how to improve your chance of success. So you can see that this is actually for the entrepreneurs to be able to get a very good source of funding because it is completely under the government support and it will not be affected by any financial support and success. But because it has this feature, the competition is very strong. As an applicant, you must understand how to get a very good source of funding. So today I'm going to share with you some of the uh, experiences or lessons and uh, I learned uh, through the uh, past 20 years or so um, when I have applied for about uh, uh, 15 di different times, but now and, and I successfully about nine times you know, to receive the money. Um, they, so I, I can share with you some of the things I learned. Hopefully that will be useful to you. 呃，今天我就要在这里跟大家分享如何来申请。那我在过去的三十年中，曾经十五次申请这个小企业转化和小企业创新研究资金，然后其中有九次获得了成功，获得了成功，非常的 impressive。The first thing is you must clearly define what you want to do. So before you even start to apply, you want to sit down to write up. In one page, what exactly you want to do, why it is significant. Uh, that's a hard work, but you need to do that. And then you can share that one, uh, that one page pager with uh, some federal agencies and, and uh, to, to get some feedback. 首先，你应该对你的产品或者是公司的目标有一个非常明确的认知，并且呢，能够在一页纸的这样短小精干的篇幅之内，非常清晰的对，就是政府部门阐述清楚你的目标和你想要达到的结果是什么。达到的结果是什么？达到的结果是什么？达到的结果是什么 ？The the sec second thing is try to match your innovation or your a new ideas or innovation. With the federal priorities, because the government, when they give you money, they want you to uh, address some of the issues uh, facing the challenge of this country. And every agent, federal agent, they publish their research priority and their interests online. So you can do your homework and read those documents and try to make a connection between what you want to do, innovation, and what they're looking for. 第二点呢，就是您需要把你们公司和你创业的目标和政府的目标尽量统一起来，就一致。每一个政府机构呢，都会有自己的呃研究，并且对这个呃每个项目的各各种不同的问题的优先次序有它自己的理解。而这些研究
，然后找到自己的项目和他们所看重问题当中的一个结合和共同点。So once you found a good match, that's a very good first step. At that time, you actually can reach out to the SBIR project officer. Each agency, federal agency, has a desk, not one, sometimes multiple, designated so-called SBIR project officers. And uh, one thing I want to share with you, so important, is these project officers actually are obligated, have a responsibility to talk to you and to help you. This is very different from other scientific research grant, where project officer cannot talk to the people who apply to avoid any potential conflict of interest. So, so this is very important. I want to share it with you. 一旦你觉得自己找到了这个共同点，那我鼓励你就会去就要去主动的去找这个机政府机构部门当中负责发放和审核这个基金的工作人员。你应该清你清楚的了解到，他们事实上有工作的义务，要告诉你和帮助你来怎么样去呃申请这个基金。这点是跟在其他的商业机构当中完全不同的一点，就是说作为政府机构，他们是有责任来扶持和帮助你。所以他们需要公开的分享他们所知道这些信息和想法。呃，我稍微补充一点呢，中文哈，就是说，呃，不是跟其他的商业部门，而是说，在政府的科研经费当中，这个他的官员是不允许和申请人谈话的，因为这是他避免呃一些一些冲突、利益冲突哈，或者他某比如某些人得到了信息，别人没得到，而在这个中小企业，这个小企业。研发这里边是个特例，他希望他能够跟中小企业谈，因为他这里是 innovation， 是都是新东西，所以这一点我希望大家都能知道，可以充分的来利用。谢谢哈，我就出来补充一点这个。非常感谢，非常感谢。Um, so let's look at there are other benefit of this kind of a grant application. Let's say even if you fail to get SBIR grant fund funding. A small business can still benefit from the process of applying for a SBIR grant. 我们看一下，就是在申请这个科研基金过程当中的其他的一些好处。那首先就是，哪怕你在这个过程当中没有成功的拿到政府的资助和资金，但是你仍然可以在这个过程当中受益无穷。So uh, first, the application process forces you to think strategically, make you do your homework, and challenge you with tough questions. Is there a need for your for your innovation? How big is the market? Who are the competitors? Right. So these questions, you have to answer them when you apply for the grant. 首先就是在过程这个申请的思考的过程当中呢，那实际上是强迫您自己一定要面对这个问题，然后很有策略性、战略性的来思考，做您的研究，然后并且问您自己一些很困难的问题，比如说您这个创新技术是不是确实是有必要的，然后它的市场份额究竟能有多大，还有就是它将要面对的竞争者有哪一些。And the re, once you submit your grant application, that will be reviewed by a panel, and the reviewers' critique will come back to you, no matter whether, no matter, you know, and then you'll be scored, you know, for your, for your application. So, no matter how well you're being reviewed, how, what kind of score you get, you you always will receive the feedback, and those feedback are very critical. And they will point out some fatal flaws in your approach, and uh, some additional expertise you may need, um, some areas you may be overlooked, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 那当您的申请交上去以后呢，他们会有一个审核委员会。那这个委员会将针对您的这个申请报告会有一个呃回馈，在这个回馈当中会提到一些很重要的问题。那这些问题对您可能都是非常有价值的，比如说在您的设计和科研呃方法当中，是不是有一些致命的缺点？
，或者是不是有一些呃其他的专家的意见你需要再获得？还有就是一些主要的问题，可能你忽视掉了。那这些回馈的信息呢，对你可能都是非常有价值的。So also, every time once you completed and submitted your application, you actually everything you have written in the process. Can become very valuable for you in the future when you try to pitch and present to other investors or to VCs, for example. 而且在这个过程当中，您写您所有书写沉淀下来这些申请资料，呃，都会将在未来您可能跟其他的投资人，呃，申请资金的过的时候，成为对您非常有价值的资源。Um, so SBIR grant, I think it's a very good alternative to VC, especially in early stage of a startup company. Um, and uh, there are phase one and phase two and fast track different type. Uh, the fast track means you can actually combine phase one and phase two together um, to, uh, you know, to, to submit at the same time. To to get bigger money and also speed up your process. 嗯，这两个呃基金呢，我认为是对于传统的风投非常好的一个替代，就是一个不同的方法，尤其是对于早期的科技创新公司。它一共有三个阶段，嗯，第一第二阶段还，但是它第一第二阶段呢，还有我们可以叫有有一个 fast track， 有一个快速通道。那快速通道呢，就是可能可以把第一第二阶段结合起来，这样呢，您可以以更短的速度，然后融到更高。Uh, well, I have served as a principal investigator for uh, a number of uh, SBIR grant, and also have a, currently I'm assisting a few startup to apply for SBIR funding. 呃，我本人呢，就是这个这项 S S B I R S T T R 的 grant 的一个呃审核人员之一，我也同时在帮助好好几家初创公司在申请这个基金。So today I'm very happy to um take this opportunity to to answer any questions the audience may have in relation to this. Uh, it is a tough competitive process, but I think if you do your homework, you work hard. Uh, it could be very rewarding experiences as well. 我今天非常希望，也很高兴，可以就呃这两个基金来回答大家可能会有的问题。呃，这是一个很可能艰难、也不容易的一个过程，但是也是非常值得有收获的一个过程。So I'm open to question. Yeah. 我们开放提问吧。我我首先我我自己有一个很很快有个问题啊。I have a very quick question. Is that you mentioned you are helping uh uh some you know startup to apply for the fund? Do you do it as a as a coaching process? Is that uh with a charge or with a split? I'm just asking upfront. Oh yeah, the uh yeah, I'm currently coaching about. Actually, coaching four companies, and uh, one already received the phase one and phase two. Very happy, and the, the other three are um, already submitted and waiting for their response. The way I usually do it, I'm working as a coach, and the two ways. One is, uh, uh, I can for uh, we have a, um, uh, if they want to just pay for my service, you know, to help to finish the. Grant application. That's okay too. Uh, we we all we just have we agree. You know, to depend on the uh, amount of involvement I have, we all agree with a fixed price, and then if we help them to apply for that. But more and more often, actually, most of people are prefer the second way, and that is, uh, they like to uh, they like me not only helping to apply but also play a role in the uh, grant if we get it. And so coach them through phase one, phase two, and then you know go to different state. In that situation, uh, usually we don't need a upfront. Uh, it's like a joint venture kind of thing. We jointly, I can help them. What, but I can budget my my effort and time into the 
the grant budget. So once we got a grant, everybody got paid. And, and sometimes they even invite me into to have an equity position to help them. So it could be multiple ways to do this. 我刚刚提了一个问题，因为张教授提到了他在帮助好几家公司申请这个政府基金，那呃，他也提到现在是有四家，然后有一家已经拿到，经完成 phase one 和 phase two 前两个阶段拿到拿到钱了，呃，另外三家还在过程当中，呃，那通他说呢有两种方式，他在这个过程当中呢，有有一种是通过像呃就是像教练一样的，呃，一个固定的费用，另外一种更更多。的更常见的呢，和大家更喜欢的呢，可能就是让他在全程呃呃参与，呃，可能在最后呢，也成为他们的投资人或者股东之一了。Okay, if there's no question, uh, I, I recommend uh, if you have any, any, if you want to learn more about this program, simply yeah. go to yeah. the sbir.gov. Because I, yes. I think your presentation is very clear. I think the, the real question is whoever is ready for it and then probably need to get hold of you. Are, are you um, want them to email you directly or call you or <laughs> email? Uh, uh, the Do you have a website? <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Actually, uh, I think Ding Ding TV and also um, Papa have my email address. Uh, so if, if there are additional information, additional questions, certainly you can just send email to me and uh, uh, we can have a, a separate conversation, you know, depending on. Um, this is a process. It's, I, I just want to, today is opportunity to introduce this program to um, our community. And I know that uh, uh, Asian American community and Chinese American community in particular are not uh, well represented in this particular program yet at this point. Um, so that's my uh, motivation to try to share this with everyone and it could be a good alternative, mm -hmm. yeah. especially for startups. Absolutely. I, actually, I do have another actually, question have here another is um, <coughs> from from, from your observation, not from only your, your experience, because I noticed your experience is a lot of them in, uh, is that pharmaceutical related or medical biotech related technology? Oh, um, good question. My, uh, my professional, okay, my background is in public health. So that, that's, so I used to, I, for example, I've been working with CDC and working with NIH, National uh, Institute of Health, uh, and, uh, uh, and like a drug prevention, drug treatment, um, that in the public issues, uh, infectious disease. Uh, so that's my personal uh, background. However, uh, the company I'm coaching now uh, are in various, mostly in high tech. I'm not particularly uh, attracted to high tech. Um, let's, let's just use uh, the, the current example. I'm one of the company I helped to get phase one and phase two, they're using uh, augmented reality technology, right? Uh, augmented reality technology to uh, do uh, medical simulation training, simulate, simulated medical training. So that is a field and I help them. Okay, uh, augmented reality is called virtual reality, virtual reality is similar to it is called do we see the more traditional uh, industries like, for example, uh, I'm, I'm in real estate, for example, or like education um, or other traditional industry, but with innovation? Do you see those being popular too? Or like agriculture? Because um, you mentioned different government agencies all have- Right. Uh, yes, those things. Uh, yes, um, agriculture, for example, agriculture also now in the process of adapting uh, new technology. Remember, this is a SBIR stands for small innovation research. So you, you need to have some kind of innovativeness uh, as related to, so let's relate to ag agriculture, for example. Uh, I am currently working with one small startup company 
uh, to apply SBIR from National Science Foundation. And they try to build a, a robotic a lawnmower to help to, you know, to help the landscaping uh, industry. So that's close to agriculture somehow, you know, related to that a little bit. And so, yes, those would be interesting technology as well, but important that you have to be innovative. Uh, that's, that's the important thing. Uh, 传统行业当中的一些创新，比如说在农业教育，呃，或者是其他行业。那刚刚张教授也确认了，就是现在比如说他现在有一个项目是在农业当中，呃，用呃机器人来呃除呃割草啊这样的一个项目，或者我相信就
work for us uh, that have brought it all together uh, from Eric Jong and Associates, who spoke to us earlier, CBC Life Financial Services, UN Media, Ethnic Media Services, Minority Business Development Agency, CBC, Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce, U.S. China Chamber of Commerce, Silicon Valley Chapter, The Asian Inc., and of course, uh, my organization, my name is Christian Malesic, and I'm the president and CEO of the Silicon Valley Central Chamber of Commerce. We're going to be moving now into our second to the last section of the afternoon. It is a, uh, a shorter session than some of the other ones, so this one will go by pretty quick. In fact, the last two sessions are a little bit shorter than than what you've seen the rest of the day if you've, if you've been with us all day or most of the day. Uh, we're going to be talking about different types of risk financing and their causes, some of the challenges that come with financing and the risk that goes back and forth. Uh, checking in with staff here to see if we have our speaker ready. Are we ready to go? Are we ready to go? Seems like we're still having a moment like delay. If you'll bear with delay, us, bear uh, with they again us. are getting uh, the speakers getting already, the and they're switching over the slide decks. Over the slide and decks. Um, it shouldn't and, be long before we be got that continued we on. We've had a number of uh, uh, questions uh, asked uh, over questions the day, asked over and uh, the day. a lot of and, uh, different. Lot of we've been tracking the numbers. Over 200 people have joined us during the course of today, which is really an amazing accomplishment. Obviously, both here live. If you started off with us at 9 9:30. We had some introductions, some thank yous. A lot of political figures were here, as well as our keynote kickoff speaker, the um, the California State Treasurer. It was pretty neat to have uh, her with us, Treasurer Ma. Uh, we had a whole bunch of mayors that joined us, a couple political candidates, some council members, and of course, a, a number of uh, business leaders and supporters who are here to make you, the audience, and those that are with us today, to be better at business tomorrow than you were today and we believe that that's done through education um, it's done through education but it's also done through relationships when you think about relationships we don't buy from companies from companies what that doesn't make sense. Of course we buy from companies. No, we don't buy from companies. Most of the time, now the world is kind of changing on this, but most of the time we buy from other people. It's all about relationships. It's about that person on the other end of the email or on the other end of the chat or the person that we met at a chamber event or that we met at Ding Ding TV Studios uh, workshop, California Small Business Workshop. It's about the people that we've met and something that they said or did or the way they handled themselves or explained their business and we thought that that makes sense to help with our business or our personal life now this is changing a little bit you know there's a couple of companies out there some of the biggest companies in the world that are right here in Silicon Valley uh, there's a member of the Silicon Valley Central Chamber one of our our bigger members and you may have heard of them they're um, an online sales company that started out in book sales so if that might give you a hint of who I'm talking about and a lot of times we'll go on our phone or our computer or device of some sort and maybe we'll buy a product or service and we're buying from the company. We haven't talked to anybody. So what are you talking about, Christian Malesic? That doesn't make sense that you say we buy with relationships. We don't buy from companies. Well, when do you decide to leave a company or perhaps to stay with them? When does a company's metal really get tested? When do we find out if they are worth your business? But well, when that really happens well, is when, when there's really a mistake, when there's, mistake when there's an error, when, an when error. they ship you the wrong they thing or it comes broke or, comes or they broke. overcharge you on the bill or something doesn't or come on time or it doesn't work like it's supposed to work. Like when, supposed any to work. when any of these details happen, details happen then, how, then does that how does that company handle, handle it? How do they make How it better? Do they, make do they better? treat you do they treat like you're the biggest you're company in the, the world? Company. Like you're like Jeff, your Bezos, Jeff Bezos, or like you're, or like you're Bill Gates, like you're or, Bill Gates Bill or Elon Musk, or whatever, Musk or whatever other famous billionaire we know from business from reading and business books and business, and business, business, and business tech. And business do they treat you like you, like, you, you like you're the like most you're important the client that they have? Because if they do, you're going to be their customer for life, aren't you? 
I think we um, are getting we, close um, to getting close figuring to out what's going on with our speaker. What's going on with our speaker. Okay, let's uh, okay, let's shift let's, gears uh, a little bit, and I will turn the microphone on. Why don't you introduce yourself and, and talk about what you can do and what we are here for the workshop are here for the workshop. Hi, Chris. Uh, how are you? Hi, Chris. Uh, how are you? Uh, Chris. Uh, yeah, so uh, my name is uh, Porto Wong. Um, I'm with uh, Asian Inc. Uh, Asian Inc. is a, uh, an operator of the um, uh, MBDA uh, business center in uh, San Jose, uh, which is uh, which uh, minority is, uh, Business minority Development business Agency, development which is a branch of uh, a branch U.S. Department of uh, Commerce. Uh, um, um, so uh, thanks for so everyone uh, that, you know, uh, that, you know, join our, uh, join our workshop today and then, you know, stay all the way you know, for, the you know, such a long day. You know, long day. Uh, uh, I hope that, you know, you guys got, you know, enough good, you know, all the information from all the wonderful speakers earlier today and get enough information and get you guys start looking at, you know, government contracting. So. I'm going to so, uh, repeat uh, what I said in uh, Mandarin afterwards. Uh, after, uh, afterwards. Um, um, uh, 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 uh,那个项目发展中心这个是一个项目也可以联络我，我可以呢尽量的帮助大家去啊解答你们的问题，或是替你们去啊跟他们联系。So the next thing I would like to do is to uh introduce, give you guys a brief introduction of uh you know what kind of service the MBDA uh Center of Business Center offer. So again, you know, uh, we are operator of the uh, uh, business center. Uh, Asian Ning is the operator, and we basically do four things. Uh, one is uh, helping small uh, minority-owned business to access the capital, uh, for uh, also uh, assist them to get certifications and uh, procurement, and also business consulting. So, so these are four uh, uh, big area that uh, we. Uh, work, work with uh, minority-owned small business. Uh, like all the, uh, like um, all the speakers uh, said that uh, speakers earlier, earlier that, today, uh, 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 you know, the, bis uh, the business, you know, the bis uh, the business uh, classify uh, as minority-owned business need to be 51% or more owned by minority minority. minorities. And then also one thing is very important, like for people they want to, for small business try to able to win government contract to have an advantage, right? The first thing to do is actually to identify what kind of certification you need. So this morning, our speakers had talked about the federal government certification requirement and also the state level certification requirement. Actually, you know, at the depending on where you are, the county level and also the city level also have their own certification. So one thing you need to do is to think about, you know, what kind of projects right you're interested in first, right? You're interested in city government projects or uh, or state level projects state level or federal project, government projects, project, project, and then you prioritize, then you prioritize uh, what kind of certification that you want, uh, you, you, you need. Uh, because, uh, because sometime for the uh, uh, certification, certification process, process, it just takes a long time. It, it could be anywhere from like, like you know three months to you know, three to six months month month or something like that, and sometimes even even longer. So it's a lot of work. So what you want to do is like don't try to get all the certification you think you can get and prioritize. And, and, you know, uh, attack one uh, at a time. So, 
so in terms of access to capital, what we will do, it will assist small business to not to not only to try to get the bank loan, the typical SBA bank loan. We will also assist small business to get get access to non-traditional financing. For example, right, loan from FDIC, loan for grant. I mean, also like funding from grant. Earlier today, right, I'll say. Uh, 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 representative uh, did talk about the California about Dream Fund, California Dream Fund or, a or a lot of people really people well aware of really the California well Relief Grant California earlier, Relief right? Grant so all these, right. all these right. also right. like, of course, also earlier there was a PPP and EIDL, uh, uh, yeah, 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 uh, all, uh, all this grant, uh, actually, uh, uh, we've actually been helping a lot of small businesses to to get qualified and to apply. So this is for the excess so capital. capital. And then for procurement, then for you know, we do, uh, you know, we do uh, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one matching, a networking event, and also, you know, once we know the small business profile, right, we will, you know, help the small business to connect with the prime contractors, or also, like, get aware of, you know, what kind of contracts is available, either from the state level, city level, or even the federal government level. And lastly, business consulting. Business consulting, we actually uh, offer one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, consulting services by looking at a uh, small business business plan. Um, uh, also, uh, we also, help them to, uh, help them to uh, you know, review uh, financial review, review, you know, financial do financial review, review for, uh, financial of their business. Basically, you know, uh, 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 the whole uh, cycles of things that related to, you know, how we can uh, provide, you know, smart business advice uh, to small business. So those are the, the service that uh, we offer. Now I am going to repeat that uh, in Mandarin. Uh 那州政府也有州政府的我们今天讲的certification 一种就是一般的银行那还有当然是就说那还有呢就是另外呢我们也提供那个帮助大家去投标政府的项目最后一点呢就是提供那个商业资讯的那个 
啊，比方说你的啊 business plan 啊之类的东西呢，我们都可以有专人呢替大家去去啊研究啊，或是去怎么去把你的那个啊，看看你的公司的生意怎么可以做得好一点。那总括来讲，我们啊 a s i a n i n 呢就是啊提供啊这些服务。那啊。有问题的话，请大家可以那随时呢，就是联系我们。那我们是啊，随时的准准备呢，会有服务。啊，谢谢大家。好，那我现在就把现在就把把我这个呃麦呢就交给那个戴安娜了。谢谢戴安娜，她今天哇这么辛苦呢，替我们办了这个这么棒的那个。